when I first got into radio 30 years ago, which I hate to listen to those because it sounds so terrible, but uh, but those tapes and and then we do have a bunch of high school football and basketball. We got some tapes of the Barry Switzer show. We don't have, unfortunately, I couldn't find any tapes of, of the Eddie Sutton show and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Chris Paul. And, and there's a lot of tapes I'd, I'd love to find. We got plenty of golf because we got to tape everything every year for the Masters. Uh, so I have a lot of that. I have some U.S. Open when I was with Westwood One. So you will hear a lot of golf tonight. You're going to hear a hockey fight with John Brooks. Uh, you're going to hear from Barry Switzer and Al Ashback and Tiger and Phil Mickelson and Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas. So we do have some star power <laughs> on this show tonight. Uh, but By but the way, Sam, I think you should yeah. say when you say tapes, these are actual cassette tapes <laughs> that we are oh, playing we apologize. from a boombox that we bought on Amazon. We did not have time to transfer these tapes over. So, Dad, this is I, yeah. your, one no, of your is, last shows listen. that you're hosting, and That's it's also right. I the might first be fired. time you're ever producing. I might not even be on tomorrow. I might be fired after tonight, after they hear the quality of, of some of these tapes. But, hey, this is <laughs> – I apologize right now for the Shade Tree uh, engineering that you're going to hear tonight because this is me working with uh, cassette tapes from a boom box on the fly. So, uh, you know, we're going to try this and see if it works. But the first cut that I have comes from the Barry Switzer Show, which I was lucky enough to host from 2004 to 2006 – uh, coach uh, stuck with me for three seasons somehow, and I couldn't decide between the, the cut with, with Switzer and Al talking about Texas or Switzer talking about the OU-Nebraska rivalry, and I went with Nebraska. So, Sam, let's get this thing started and go to the Barry Switzer show. Coach, you are much in demand. I, I know they're doing series on you on TV, and I, I pick up a copy of the Sooner You magazine, the new magazine from Larry McAllister, and a great cover on that, uh, Riding with the King, right? And they're doing a, I don't know how many part series uh, in the Sooner You magazine, but that's a classic cover. Oh, it's the first it. time I've seen it. We it took that picture a few weeks ago. Larry came over and, with his red Cadillac convertible, one of the old Vintage <laughs> Cadillacs. I got in the back seat with the tux on, and... Uh, and uh, we kind of took a few shots of it. It's kind of a neat look. But, uh, yeah, we've got a guy walking around here in this booth here with a camera stuck in his face. It's Tony from Channel 4 and Linda Cavanaugh sent him over here. They're doing a special, I guess it's raiding time. So we're going to get a chance to have your face on TV oh, right. where we can put a voice yeah. and, a and a face together. Yeah, Greg people Humphries. don't need to see my face on TV. Uh, let's get back to the phones. Let's go to Scott. You're on the Sports Animal with Barry Switzer. How you doing, Coach? Fine, Scott. Uh, I just wanted to comment on a couple things of uh, going back to Sin Ray Memories when he, uh, when he just came off playing Nebraska. One of my favorite ones was when we played Nebraska back in 87. And uh, uh, oh, Carl Thompson took us, you know, and helped us to win that game. My favorite play was when uh, Ricky Dixon uh, intercepted that from uh, uh, Taylor. Uh, and Taylor shot his mouth off that year saying that we couldn't play with him. I just, I was one of my favorite, favorite memories. Uh, wanted you to comment on that, and then uh, the other thing is, you know, that I was watching after the game uh, this weekend. They were talking about um, us running up the score uh, on Nebraska, but I remember uh, Ole Osborne last couple of years that he played us, even though we were down when we had Blake. You know, they ran the score up on us pretty good, like 69 to seven, I think, and 73 21. That just it kind of hurts me they, how easy they forget that kind of stuff. I don't think it's too tough to run the score up in those years. But well, yeah. it is true. Yeah, I understand that. Maybe John uh, should have used Callahan's <laughs> booking plan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, Scott, we appreciate the call. All right, well, thanks. All right. You know, he's talking about the two Nebraska years we played up there, 86, 87 in a row. You know, in 87, Broderick Thomas and Steve Taylor were shooting off their mouth, Greg, about... They don't have the keys to our, our house, house. yeah, right. our house, right. and uh, we're going to hang half a hundred on them. They were, they were talking about big numbers and all, and, and right. I'll never forget the week, that Thursday, I called our team up, and that week long, that theme that's been coming out of Nebraska, and I, and I looked at uh, uh, our defensive team when we called them up there, and I said, hey, you guys, are y'all planning to make the trip? Bosworth, Daryl Reed, Troy Johnson, and I said, <laughs> you know, they, those guys fix to hang half a hundred on us. I said, you know. I just wonder if y'all plan on coming or not, because maybe I don't know something y'all know something about, and they know something I don't know. I said, you know, they hadn't scored three touchdowns in three years on us, and why are they going to put so many points on us? But, of course, we went up there. They made a touchdown on the first drive, and from that point on, they never made another first down of the game. Yeah. But it, it, I'll never – here's one of the, the moments I think about at Nebraska. It's really a – 
I used to finally have state troopers travel with me. Jerry Kaysen, the number two guy with the highway patrol, he stopped me one day going to Norman, and I saw this guy getting out of his car. It took him three minutes to get out. He's about <laughs> six, seven. He was a, on a gunship over in Vietnam. He's about six, seven, about 255. He walks up to my car, and I roll down the window, and I don't let him have a chance to speak. I said, you know, I've been looking for a guy like you. And I said, I see all these SEC guys, these, you know, Fair Price and Vince Dooley, got all these highway patrol with them on the sidelines. I'd love for you to be traveling with me. Well, of course, he just starts smiling and laughing at me. And next thing I know, he's traveling with me. So I've got him at Nebraska. They pulled you over for speed? Yeah, right. So what happens <laughs> is that, that uh, we're at Lincoln, and Jerry and I, it was the 86 game. Yeah. You know, we put it on pretty good here in 85, and, and uh, we went up there in 86, and we goes come right back. Down to the wire. Well, it goes right down the wire. We go right down the wire. Yeah. We, we score by Keith 10 Jackson points. We, can, we score 10 points in about two right. minutes in the ball right. game. It's one of those we come from behind and win it in the last minute or so. And their fans are stunned. And our, so I'll never forget walking off the field with Jerry beside me. We're walking toward the south end zone, going toward our locker room, and the fans are stunned. They're all 15,000 of them, Craig, sitting up there in that end zone. They haven't moved. They got little kids. They got grandmothers. They got mamas and daddies, and everybody. And I stop about the 20 yard line in, in, in middle of the field after we'd shaken hands with yeah. Tom Osborne and visited there and all that. And I'm walking to the locker room that's kind of dispersed. And I look up, and they're all looking down at me and Jerry in the middle of the field about the 20-yard line. And I, all of a sudden, I pointed up at him, Jerry, I said, I was mystified. I said, they're still there. Well, it, when I pointed at him, I was stunned by what happened. Because, you know, you see, remember in the old days in TV at halftime, they had the, all these card shows that synchronized. Right. Oh, and synchronized. They yeah. orchestrate it, and they work on it. Yeah. They do these flip cards, 30,000 right. people. Oh, you the even have oh, yeah, we used to have the seven. card section. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you. 15,000 people, the little kids, the mamas, the daddies, and the grandparents all gave me the finger at one time. I said the slack was on cue. I mean, their arms came off the head. They shot it out there to me. I was stunned. I looked at Jerry, and I said, oh, I wish I had a picture of this. I wish I had a panoramic shot of this end zone in Nebraska with 15,000 people giving you the fa a finger at one time. Now, think about uh, that. How, how many times has that ever happened to you? But yeah. it happened to me one day up there. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't complain about it. So, Callahan, you know, we ought to be able to get back. That's right. called away about, about being help bellies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great get, story. Give me the bird. Uh, I wonder if Callahan had, had ever been to Oklahoma. I don't know. Uh, let's go to Yogi Sooner. You're on the Barry Switzer Show. Go ahead. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Fine, Yogi. <clears throat> Good. Listen, i tell you why I called. I just wondered... You know, I, I, I'm a, been a, I graduated way back in 64, and I've been all over watching Sooner football. And I remember I was at the Orange Bowl, I guess it was 84, 85. We lost to Washington. Yeah, that's been already brought up once tonight. Thanks. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, I remember that game, and I remember, you know, a fumble we didn't get, and I remember a couple of bad calls we didn't get. And I just wonder if, you know, as a coach here, you, you play so many games, if something like that just eats at you, if you uh, wake up. Uh, if you wake up one night wondering, what the hell happened? Well, let me, let me tell you, first of all, how I feel about that. Very average Oklahoma offensive football team. We only averaged a couple hundred yards of offense that year, all passing and running. We were a great defensive football team, and, and we and we played that way on the football field. People couldn't move the ball against us. We beat Nebraska. They're undefeated, ten and zero at Lincoln. They get Go about four hundred in that game. Right? We, you know, we don't have much offense, but we win the ball game because no one could move the ball and score on us. And uh, and they had uh, about four hundred yards in the ball game total offense, but they couldn't get an end zone against us. And yeah. uh, uh, so we won with defense. We weren't a great offensive football team, but 85, 86, 87, we really were because we finally uh, went back to the pure wishbone. We went back to doing things. Our playbook changed, and we weren't uh, the Matt Brown offense that we had in 84 was totally different from what we were the next three years. Uh, let's go to Nick up in Edmond. You're on the Sports Animal. Barry Switzer, go ahead. How's it going, Coach? Fine, sir. All right, I'm talking football tonight. Uh, Coach, after you win a Super Bowl, the national championship. Uh, this is a pro football question. I mean, you've, you've, you've been around the ring. You've, you've come full circle. You've won championships at every level. How tough is it for what the quarterback in Pittsburgh is doing, big Pittsburgh fan, Ben Roethlisberger? Coach, how tough is it for rookie quarterback? It's a two-part question. How tough is it for a rookie quarterback in the NFL to prepare to win? I mean, he's won seven games in a row now, Coach. I mean, you know, he knocked off two undefeated teams first time it's been done in league history. 
How tough is it for a core, a young quarterback in the NFL to win? I mean, not you know, let you alone oh, win seven. Let, let me, yeah, it's easier today than it was years ago. First of all, because the playbooks are similar. Play, people are playing pro offenses. They're playing spread offenses. They're they're running that terminology. You know, 20 years ago that wasn't the case. Uh, uh, Aikman, when he came out, Aikman was a franchise quarterback, first player picked. Everyone thought he's the guy who can get you the Super Bowl, which he did. He won three of them. But he was still not playing the pro offensive set. He would struggle. Guys don't struggle today. Guys come from systems today that play in the college. in college and so it's much easier to do it today and here again talent is what does it talent it, it, it overrides experience every time I, as i've always said i'll take an experienced player i mean a, a talented player over an experienced player anytime i don't care if the guy hadn't played the snap if i got a guy that is more talented than the guy in front of him and the guy's a senior i'm gonna play the guy that's it, it's got the best physical talent to play the game as long as he can execute the playbook and the reason Pittsburgh's winning also, besides the quarterback, is the fact that they're running the ball and they're stopping the run. Even even with Staley, their number one running back out, the bus comes in and goes over 102 weeks in a row. So the offensive line is also protecting him, and they're able to dominate the line. Of I haven't strength. seen I haven't seen them. You know, I heard that before the draft that this guy probably was a better quarterback than a lot of guys that yeah. were talked about. Yeah, Manny uh, and Rivers got all the attention. But I tell you what, you go to the com I'm going to tell you, the, the combine, I'm sure the guy was at the combine. Mm -hmm. I'm sure right. he's one of the three or four quarterbacks right. there. The, I'm going to tell you, that combine, they put him through. You know, you take our guys. You know, I was talking to Laceville the other night. Laceville told me that Auburn, we're talking about Auburn being mm -hmm. a good football right. team. Right. He thinks Auburn is a very physical on both sides of the ball in the offensive line and defensive line. Mm -hmm. Probably more physical than maybe Southern Cal and, and us. Uh, he thinks two running backs at Auburn were first-round draft choices. He Kevin told Williams me. Williams and Brown. Yeah, right. I, I don't know who the guy I know right. what Williams. I don't know who the other guy is. Yeah. He, yeah, and their quarterback is pretty good. Highly recruited guy, but a pretty good quarterback. has been a winner for him. But they're solid everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes here and studies us the other day. He came in. I was supposed to make, be him dinner, meet him at dinner, but uh, I couldn't make it. And he went in early and, and got up early and left me a message the next day. He said, call him. Well, he, I called him. He says, Oklahoma's better than I thought they were. Oklahoma's better on offense than I thought they were. He says, the right tackle is a better player than I thought Oklahoma would have on offense. But he uh -huh. says, there's a good prospect. Uh, he'll get a lot bigger and thicker, you know, because he's strong, lean, 6'6", right. six, six, 315. He's going he's gonna to get massive. He'll get back. But he's got the long arms. He stuns them on the rush, and he's got a good enough feet to play there. He says, Clayton's a first-round pick. And he says, your running back is a great player. He said, you went down the line. He says... You know, uh, he said the offensive, uh, another guy's not supposed to be looking at Joe with the 77, what is a good mm -hmm. player. Right. And you, he was talking about Davin Joseph uh, there, uh, number 77. But, but no, that, that OU team and, and Larry Lacewell was giving them great grades. And, of course, that team uh, would go on uh, to lose to USC. And that, that team was great until they got to the Orange Bowl, right, Sam? So. Uh, before my time, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, what do we got next? Okay, all right, Sam. What we have next is Sam's radio debut. Uh, the oh boy, Sports Talk thirteen forty. Uh, all right, we got started in August of ninety five. We were supposed to start right before Sam was born, but then uh, we got pushed back a week. Sam was born on Tuesday of that week, and. So, anyway, uh, we got started a little bit later. Got started, I think, August the 7th. Uh, Sam was born on August the uh, the 1st. Well, now we, we fast forward two years to 1997, and we had a two-year-old, Sam Humphreys, make his radio debut. And, Brian, if you're with us there, you can really give me the phrase that i like for you to say. And now this is Brad Lund talking. My partner, Brad Lund. Brian is Brian Bernhardt, who would uh, go on to be the, the voice of University of Illinois. He's been there probably uh, 25 years now, being the voice of the fighting Illini, Brian Bernhardt. Uh, about our little midnight. Yeah, nothing good happens after midnight. Yeah, and that was like at 2.43 <laughs> a.m. Right. And how about these guys going 90-something miles per hour, and every one of them involves a Mercedes? 
<laughs> Is that the only car that goes 90 plus? Hey, guys. Yeah. We have a special guest for you. Okay, well, let's bring him in. All right. Uh, go ahead, caller. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, Hello. You're, you're on Sports Talk 1340. Craig. Yes. I can barely hear you. My phone, I guess, is messed up. Just wanted to tell you congratulations on the second year. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this, this sounds like my beautiful wife, Seth. It is. It is. I have somebody who wants to say something to you. Hold on. Okay. My shoulder. <laughs> Hi, big daddy. Hey, thank Hi. you, Sam. Did, did you get... Hi, big daddy. Hey, hi, Sam. How you doing, Good buddy? Call? Debut on the radio. This is Sam's debut. And did you notice what he called me? I couldn't get... He didn't just call oh, me bye. daddy. Can you say it again, Sam? Could you hear him? Yeah, we heard him. Put him on one more time. Let him say hi. Okay. Hi, Big Daddy. Hi, Big Daddy. Hi, Big Daddy. That's hi, what he Big called Daddy. me all the time. Big Daddy. Big Daddy. <laughs> there he... I, I thought he said hi, hey, Tiger Wood. <laughs> hey, Sam. Hey, th hey, Sam. Put him back on. Okay, let's bye, do a little... Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Wait, wait a second, Bev. Yes. Okay, put him back on. We're going to do a little impromptu test. We haven't set this up. Oh, no. Okay, put him back, Put him on the phone. Okay. All right. Sam, Sam. talk to Big Daddy. Sam, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, Sam, who won the U.S. Open? Arnie L. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Sam. Hey, Arnie all right, Sam, stay with... Okay, Sam, can you hear me? Who, Sam, who won the Masters? Tiger. <laughs> Does he know the British Hello. Open? No, nah, don't don't ask him the British Open. That's pretty good. Hello. Uh, all right. Hey, Sam, bye-bye. I love you. Bye-bye. Right, give the phone back to Mom. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, Bev, thank you very much. Well, I love you, darling. I'm very proud of your radio station for you, and it's been a lot of fun. Well, thank, thank you so much. And, and folks, uh, uh, Bev has gone through a lot. She's put up with a lot in the last couple of years uh, because of this radio station and... Uh, just want to say thanks to my beautiful wife, and, uh, and Bev, you're going to be down at the listener party tonight, right? Oh, absolutely. All right. Bev, is Sam going to make it? He'll make it early for just a little while. All right. All right. Thanks, Bev. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. That was Sam's radio debut. What do you Ernie think, Sam? Else or <laughs> Tiger. <laughs> and we did teach you to uh, say Justin Leonard. years old okay we'll try to work in uh, uh yukon and the brooklyn Oki. that was classic those guys going back and forth uh that was from august 14th of 1997 now we will take a time out when we come back it's time to hear from tiger and phil we'll go to the 2005 u.s open at pinehurst when we come back on hunt man's highlights on sports animal is your office gig dragging and you need your sports fix? Listen to WWLS on thesportsanimal.com or stream anytime at the Sports Animal app. Just a moment. Interesting. Okay, so you'd like a new bike and baseball glove. Sounds good. Well, thank you, Santa. What about you, Dad? Uh, how about a new head of luscious hair? Maybe help me get back what I've lost? Uh, can't bring you that but can tell you who to call. Dr. Tim Love. He's a board-certified plastic surgeon, award-winning, restoring hair and confidence for the last 30 years and only $4 per graft. Wow, thanks, Santa. When all you want for Christmas is a new head of hair, call Dr. Tim Love at 405-751-LOVE or visit drtimlove.com. You guys know I am brutally honest about sports, and I am no different when it comes to orthopedics. There's no reason to go anywhere else than McBride Orthopedic Hospital. They are my top team in the state. Trust them 110%. Don't think about an appointment. Make an appointment. McBride is a difference maker when it comes to orthopedics. Call 405-230-9270 or go online at mcboh.com. McBride is a sure thing in my book. 100% physician owned. A hit in the morning. Between class, after school, vaping sucks you in quick. Not to mention all the chemicals and health problems everyone's talking about. That's why thousands of teens are ready to take back their life their own way. With My Life, My Quit. When you sign up with us, you'll get a free and simple quit plan that makes it easier to stop vaping. Now's the time to get your life back. Visit MyLifeMyQuit.com or text Start My Quit to 36072. 
It all starts with trust at Bob Moore Kia Northwest Expressway, where you can drive home a new 24 Kia Sportage EX for just $369 a month. Straightforward, straight to the point deals, and with a straight face. At Bob Moore Kia, you'll be treated right from the start with straight up deals. So get a new Kia Sportage for $369 a month, only for a limited time at Bob Moore Kia. Northwest Expressway, west of Rockwell, or BobMoreKia.com. Number 6260, 29,700 plus 45P, 6.5% 84 months, or KHF, WAC, expires 12-123. Hey Oklahoma, I'm Alan Bowman, quarterback for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. There's a lot of things that us as student athletes have to balance. School and football are huge, but just the pressures of everybody coming in and expecting the most out of everyone. If people are dealing with things that maybe they don't feel comfortable talking with friends or family about, and there's something that really is on their mind that's eating them up, 988's always there to help. It's a great source that you can go to for anything that you're going through. To learn more, head to 988oklahoma.com. Are you ready to sell your industrial warehouse? Mercer Company connects sellers with buyers using their network of industrial real estate professionals. Mercer Company has a buyer and can get you an offer quickly. Reach out today, mercer-company.com. You won't want to miss the 12 deals of Christmas at H&H Shooting Sports. A new deal opens every day leading up to Christmas. Get the Springfield Armory XDM Elite 9mm pistol for $549.99. And take 15% off all beach-made knives just in time for Christmas. Get into H&H Shooting Sports on Christmas Eve for the one-day-only used gun blowout. Take 20% off all used guns on December 24th. Only at H&H Shooting Sports, Oklahoma's headquarters for guns and gear, located just off I-40 and Meridian. For generations, our people have worked alongside our neighbors and given back to their communities. The spirit of hard work and a giving heart lives on through our partnerships with local leaders and businesses. With teamwork and good stewardship of our resources, we can make a positive impact on the lives of the Okla Achukma, the good people. I'm Gary Batten, Chief of the Choctaw Nation, and I am Choctaw Proud. Hear our stories at TogetherWe'reMore.com. Whether you're on the job or tailgating with friends, stay warm and keep the good times rolling with a forced air heater or radiant heater from Chapel Supply. Power through your work with a Chapel Supply forced air heater, delivering instant warmth to any workspace to keep you on schedule. But that's not all. Switch to tailgate mode with the radiant heater, transforming your tailgate into a comfort zone. Whether you're on the clock or off, staying warm is a breeze with Chapel Supply. Chapel supplies you. Authorized Mighty M dealer. The NBA on Christmas Day from ESPN Radio can be heard right here on The Sports Animal. Game one of our doubleheader is Milwaukee versus the New York Knicks, followed by the Golden State Warriors and Denver to play the Nuggets. Coverage begins at 11 a.m. on ESPN 640 a.m. and 98.1 FM. WWLS, The Sports Animal. Now back to more Humpman's Highlights. Sports Animal Studios, powered by the OKC Thunder. Take your shot to win two tickets to tomorrow night's Thunder game against the Clippers. Text Loud OKC to 405-900-9957 to enter for your chance to win. Welcome back to Huntman's Highlights on the Animal. Craig Humphreys along with Sam Humphreys. All right. Let's fast forward up to 2005, 2005 U.S. Open. I was lucky enough to work with Westwood One uh, for six or seven years back in the early 2000s. Um, started the 2001 Masters. We'll hear more from that in a few minutes. Uh, this is from the 2005 U.S. Open. Uh, Tiger Woods, he had gone through a 10-major drought uh, through the end of 2004. Finally bounced back to beat Chris Marco at the 2005 Masters. And now... We're to the U.S. Open at Pinehurst, and here's a little preview with Tiger of the 2005 U.S. Open. Tiger, Payne Stewart won here at Pinehurst in 1999. What are your memories of Payne, and especially his putt on 18 in 1999? Well, Payne is uh, was a great guy. He was a practical joker. You know, he, he was always willing to give you the needle, even if you didn't want it, and it was a lot of fun. I... I I didn't know him that long, but the time I did know him, it, uh, it was awfully fun to try and needle him as, as back as much as I possibly could. And we had a good time, especially times in Ireland we spent before the British Open. It was um, an absolute blast. And, 
You know, the putty made 18. He did the only thing he could do. I mean, he laid up because he had a, just an absolute horrific line. Got a bad break there after a good tee shot. And um, he had a decent wedge, not a great wedge shot, but he left himself uphill uh, with a chance to win the Open. That's where you want to have it. And um, he poured it. Hey, at the Masters, you and Chris separated yourselves from the field by seven shots. What did it mean to beat the other top players in the world by that margin? At the time, we could care less. You know, we're trying to beat each other. So we have an opportunity to separate ourselves. We didn't have to worry about anybody else. And um, it's not too often nowadays you get paired up with your guy where you can separate yourself like that and have basically a stroke match play situation going on. And um, we had that opportunity, and we went right at, right, right at one another, and um, it was a bunch of fun. One last question. Your thoughts on Pinehurst and the key for you this week? Well, the key to this week is just patience. Put the ball in the play. Put the ball on the green. If you can make it st- stay on the green, it would be great. And um, just try and go ahead and, and be as patient as possible and take care of your opportunities when you get them. Tiger, I appreciate your time. Good luck this week. Thank you very much. And that was Tiger Woods uh, before the 2005 uh, U.S. Open at Pinehurst. And uh, i tell you what, let's, let's go ahead and – Put this back in and hear from Phil Mickelson also. Uh, Before that week at Pinehurst, Mickelson would go on and win the 2005 PGA for his second major later in the year. But here's Phil before Pinehurst. Here we go. Let's see. Here we go. Here's uh, Phil Mickelson. Tiger Payne Stewart won here at Pinehurst. Here we go. All right. Now now we're down. Okay. Uh, Who are we we going to Okay. Greg has got two questions. Okay. Phil, the images are unforgettable of Payne Stewart here in 1999. What are your memories of Payne and your memories of 1999 here at Pinehurst? Well, I have a lot of memories about 99, and it was a, an exciting tournament to be a part of. It was exciting the day after when I had the birth of my first child. I think the fondest memory of the tournament was the way Payne Stewart won, the, the shots he hit the last three holes and the class that he displayed throughout the week. What are your thoughts on this golf course, and how is it different from how it played in 1999? Well, it's playing very similar to 99. They added a few tee boxes to make it longer, but we're hitting the same iron shots into the green. So it plays very similar to 99. The difference was in 99 we had a lot of rain, and the green softened up, and we were able to, to get at some pins and make birdies and, and one under par one. Right now the greens are so much firmer than what we played any of those four rounds that uh, I think quite a few over par could conceivably win. One last question. You've been second in three U.S. Opens. Why do you play so well in the U.S. Open? Well, I I, I don't know, I guess. I love the golf tournament. Uh, My reputation as kind of a wild driver seems to uh, be that I I would not play well in this event. But I try not to uh, overpower it off the tee and just kind of swing within myself and keep it in play. And when I'm able to do that, I'm able to, to, to play well in this event. Hey, Phil, we appreciate your time. Good luck this week. Thanks, Craig. And that was Phil Mickelson before the 2005 U.S. Open, Sam. And now he had, uh, what, three second-place finishes, I said, at that time. <laughs> and now he's up to six second-place finishes at the U.S. Open and still, you know, looking for that U.S. Open. I mean, he got the British. He has the PGA. He's got three different green jackets, Sam, but he can't quite get that U.S. Open. It's amazing hearing young Phil and knowing that he just finished second in the Masters this year. Are you kidding me? You know, it, it's so cool hearing those old clips. Now, tell the people out there, you know, Tiger always gave you good interviews, and Phil did most of the time, and a lot of guys did when they played well, but Tiger always gave you a great interview, right? That's what Bob Papa uh, says, voice of the New York Giants, and, and he was uh... – uh, the voice of Westwood One Golf, uh, great guy, Bob Papa. But that's what Papa. I would deliver it to the tower. I would never see it again. But at the end of 2005, the producer said, "Hey, you want all this stuff from this year and his stuff, Masters, Pinehurst, from the PGA of Balsall?" I said, "Yeah, that's great." So uh, anyway, that's why I have a lot. Uh, from Pinehurst and Bottle Straw from 2005. Uh, let's hear from Sergio. I tell you, people ask me who I interviewed most over the years, and it was Tiger, followed by Phil. But I would have to say an easy number three is Sergio. People forget how many majors that Sergio contended in back in the early 2000s. Uh, here's Sergio before Pinehurst back in 2005. Sergio, coming down in three, two, one. 
Well, Sergio, you've had six top tens this year, five on the PGA Tour, and, of course, you win last week at Congressional. What's been the key for you this year? Um, well, I, um, you know, I think that my game is, has been pretty solid all year long. Unfortunately, um, well, my putting is, uh, took a bit of time to, to get going, but it looks like it's starting to. So uh, I think that uh, putting is always, is always huge, and you know, I've been fortunate enough to, to start going on the right way with it. You seem to play the tough golf course as well. You were fourth place at Bethpage, won at Congressional, played well at Wachovia, almost won there. You were in the hunt at Southern Hills. Why do you play the tough golf courses so well? I don't know. I've, I guess I've always enjoyed them. Uh, I've always enjoyed, you know, feeling like uh, like you don't have to make every putt to to be to be in the hunt. And uh, you know, I guess it relaxes me a bit more with my putting. It frees my stroke a little bit and. Um, you know, thanks to that, I, I, I'm able to make a, a bit more putts. So I guess that's probably one of the biggest the biggest things. You didn't play here in 1999. What are your thoughts on this golf course? It's good. It's a tough course. Uh, very tough. <clears throat> you know, you, you you have to be a bit lucky here because sometimes you, you're going gonna to hit good shots. They're going to end up in bad places and, you know, in tough, tough spots to, to get up and down. And, you know, you just got to deal with it the best way possible. And get through get through those bad moments and hopefully have some a lot of good ones one final question three of your six uh, pga tour wins have come the week before the u.s open you want to talk to the usga get them to move up the open a week because no one no one's ever won the week before the open and the open I know. you want to be the first yeah, well hopefully <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll try it'll be it'll be something nice to do but um you know it's a victory it's it's always nice and i really enjoyed it last week at, at congressional in dc and you know, I'm looking forward to this week and hopefully uh, keep it going the same way. Hey, Sergio, we appreciate your time. Good luck this week. Thanks, Craig. Yeah, that was Sergio back in 2005 at Pinehurst. Let's let's hear more from Tiger later in that week. Now, this is Saturday night after Tiger shot an even par 72. He would be still at plus three for the tournament. Um, Tiger would go on to lose to Michael Campbell, but, but he would finish two over par for the tournament. And, and still be second when being second by three shots, uh, three shots clear of the next player. But uh, let's hear more from Tiger the week of Pinehurst, week of the U.S. Open in 2005. Here's more from Tiger. Well, Tiger, 72, a very good number today. I'll take it. Um, after that great start I had today, you know, Bogan one and three, it uh, was looking pretty ugly early. But um, right of the ship, made a bunch of pars and um, just grinded my butt off, really. Yeah, it was a U.S. Open round, especially after the start, a bunch of pars, and you had the one birdie. Talk about that birdie that you made at number 11. Uh, about time. You know, uh, I didn't uh, get Nolan Ryan shut out there, so uh, it was nice. I hit uh, a beautiful drive and I hit a little wedge in there to about 10 feet right of the hole and made it, so uh, that was key. You had 16 greens today, but 36 putts. Uh, talk mm. about that. Well, I had two, three putts today, and... Um, you know, most of my putts I had, I wasn't getting the ball close because it's hard to get the ball close. I'm keep sticking it 20, 30, 40 feet away from the hole and um, just hoping a two putt. So it's kind of the nature of this golf course right now. How about the conditions out there? Oh, they're brutal. Um, the greens are drying up. They're they're uh, still receptive, but they're unbelievably difficult. I mean, the pin location search. I mean, if, thank God I got spikes. I feel like if I back off, I'm going to fall right down the hill. So uh, it uh, it's getting tough. Hey, Tiger, appreciate your time. Good luck you tomorrow. It. Thank you very much. As Tiger, after the third round Saturday, Sam, you've played that golf uh, course, Pinehurst number two, <laughs> with the upside down bowl greens, uh, and they had it playing tough that week. Uh, I, I got to play that course uh, the Monday afterwards, Sam. That's right, that's right. And the U.S. Opens there again this upcoming season in 2024. A lot different since they redid it, but it's cool to hear young Tiger. Obviously, a different Pinehurst and a different Tiger coming up at the U.S. Open this year, but it's so cool listening back to these tapes. Okay, here's another one from Peter Jacobson, and I just wanted to play this one because Peter Jacobson was the best friend that Payne Stewart had, or easily among his very best friends. And I got to interview Peter that Saturday after the third round at Pinehurst. Here is Peter Jacobson. All right, Peter Jacobson coming down in three, two, one. Peter, quite a day, a 69, 32 on the front, and an ace on number nine. It was great. I wish I'd followed it up with a 32 on the back. I, I uh, had a fantastic shot on number nine. It was a seven iron 
perfect shot all the way and never left the flag. It took one bounce and flew into the cup. And in fact, when my, we, we saw it go in, we didn't know if it if it went over the green or not, because that has happened here at Pinehurst. You can hit a great shot and it can disappear over the green, but this one disappeared into the cup. Good day. You birdied both par fives, number four and number 10. Yeah, number, number four, I hit it just short in two and hit a great pitch to about six feet. And then number 10, same thing. I laid up with a five iron and hit a great great sandwich in there about 10 feet and, and made the putt. It's uh, This is all about strategy and placement. There's nothing about power out here. Uh, you've got to really play smart. Peter, it's hard to talk to you today without remembering your good friend Payne Stewart, who won here in 1999. I know you shared a lot of great times together. Jake uh, Trout and the Flounders. Uh, what are your memories of Payne? Well, gosh, there's there's probably too many to talk about. Obviously, on the golf course, he was just a fantastic competitor, very, very intense, but very fair and very fun. That's why he was such a great Ryder Cup player. Whether whether the United States won or or the United States lost, it it, it didn't matter to him. The, the sportsmanship and the camaraderie of the Ryder Cup was important to Payne. But off the golf course, I got to know he and his family very, very well. Our kids about the same age, and we did a lot of... We did a lot of pizza parlors and a lot of traveling together when we were younger. Uh, so for me to come back here and think about Payne, I think maybe Payne was the one that nestled that ball into the cup on number nine for me. <laughs> one last question. We want to know, who won that playoff in 10 Cup? You or Don Johnson? Well, I did. I mean, I, it was the easiest U.S. Open I've ever had. All I had to do was beat Don Johnson and Kevin Costner. That was a piece of cake. Hey, Peter, your first U.S. Open since 1996. It's good to have you back. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Great Peter question. <laughs> That's a great question. I've uh, always he, wondered that. Uh, Peter's a great guy and obviously has done well in TV after uh, his playing days in golf. And, I, and l- let me play one more. I mean, I interviewed Tiger so many times, Sam, uh, as you know, and going to the driving range and, and – uh, One, two, three, test. Here, just a second. Here. Uh, yeah, Tiger, I mean, I, I've interviewed him walking to the driving range, to the locker room, to his car <laughs> – uh, at, did one in the in the players' lounge that we'll hear uh, later uh, at Baldestral. Uh But this one at Pinehurst, this is the first time I interviewed him in the cart burn. And Tiger, he came up two shots short against Michael Campbell in that 2005 U.S. Open. Like I said, easily in second um, as he was two over par. I think Campbell finished at even. Tiger at two over the next uh, was at, at five over par. Uh, but we're waiting. The ceremony's going on. He's going to have to be called out there because he's a runner-up in the U.S. Open, and he's kicking himself for missing a bunch of putts, but he's nice enough to talk to me. As we're, we're just off the putting green there at Pinehurst in the cart burn. He's waiting uh, for the ceremony. Uh, so here is Tiger Woods after finishing second in the 2005 U.S. Open. Tiger Woods coming down in three, two, one. Well, Tiger, you battled back with a 33 on the back, 969, gave it everything you had. Yeah, that's. Uh, I gave everything I had today. I didn't uh, didn't feel good with the putter over <laughs> all four days, so that was frustrating. But I sucked it up and made some putts today, and I don't know how I did that, but I um, got bared down and made some, but also missed some too, which uh, in the end, over the four days, really hurt. You know, uh, the uh, last two groups had three golfers, a combined 33 over par. How tough was it? Brutal. Um, you know, Stevie and I were talking about the golf course was actually close to borderline going over the top. Um, the wind would have kept blowing as, as hard as if he would have picked up at all. It would have been brutal. Came down to 16 and 17. Talk about the par putt at 16 and then again, what happened at 17? I blocked the putt on 16. Um, 17, I, I tried to I tried to, tried to make it on 17 and missed it, ran it by, and then I, uh, I blocked the second one again. Some great shots on the back nine. Shot of the day at number 15, the birdie at 18. You, you had some great shots on the bank. Well, I played. I really felt like I hit the ball well all day, and um, I felt like I struck the ball well all week. I just never, never seemed to make enough putts. Um, too many three putts. That's normally not like me. You know, I usually put a lot better than that. And unfortunately, this week just kind of did me in. Tiger, Tiger, you battled back like a champion. We appreciate your time. You Thank you. It. Thank you very much. That was Tiger and Pinehurst, 2005, finished second to Michael Campbell. We will take a timeout. When we come back, we're going to hear from Brooksy, the great John Brooks, when he's doing some Blazers hockey. Blazers, San Antonio, and a big fight breaks out. No one better than John Brooks on the call 
uh, in San Antonio that night. Craig Humphreys along with Sam Humphreys. It's Humpman's Highlights coming right back on the Sports Animal. This is your Oklahoma City Thunder All Access Pass, sponsored by Oklahoma Men's Clinic. Now here is Gideon Hamilton on WWLS, the Sports Animal. There's still another day before Oklahoma City resumes action. Head coach Mark Dagnall on why he's confident giving Kaysen Wallace minutes in his rookie season. The reason we trust him is he's very efficient on the offensive end of the floor. You know, he takes the right shots, he keeps the ball moving, he's a great spacer. And then defensively, he can guard, you know, and, and guard reliably. As we know, guys that compete like that and play like that, they improve quickly. The Thunder hosts the Los Angeles Clippers tomorrow night. This has been your Oklahoma City Thunder All Access Pass on your Oklahoma City Thunder flagship station, WWLS. The Sports Animal. Thanksgiving might be over, but if your turkey neck is still hanging around, let board-certified plastic surgeon Dr. Tim Love help. Dr. Tim Love has a new in-office procedure designed to eliminate stubborn neck fat and tighten loose skin. My Elevate is a minimally invasive procedure using a light-guided suture support system placed around the jawline that will immediately elevate the area. No more turkey neck. Can be combined with other procedures like face tight and liposuction for incredible, long-lasting results. Consult with Dr. Love today and see if My Elevate is right for you. 405-751-LOVE. DrTimLove.com. I'm a huge believer in living life to the fullest. That's why I go to McBride Orthopedic Hospital. They do everything they can to keep me active and living my best life. Working with McBride on my orthopedic issues help me stay in the game and keep up with you yardbirds. Don't let life pass you by. Be proactive and call McBride today at 405-230-9270 or go online at mcboh.com. You will be glad you did. 100% physician owned. A hit in the morning, between class, after school. Vaping sucks you in quick, not to mention all the chemicals and health problems everyone's talking about. That's why thousands of teens are ready to take back their life their own way with My Life, My Quit. When you sign up with us, you'll get a free and simple quit plan that makes it easier to stop vaping. Now's the time to get your life back. Visit MyLifeMyQuit.com or text StartMyQuit to 36072. It all starts with trust at Bob Moore Kia Northwest Expressway, where you can drive home a new 24 Kia Forte LXS for just $279 a month. Straightforward, straight to the point deals, and with a straight face. At Bob Moore Kia, you'll be treated right from the start with straight up deals. So get a new Kia Forte for $279 a month only for a limited time at Bob Moore Kia. Northwest Expressway, West of Rockwell, or BobMoreKia.com. Number 4515121000 plus 485B, 6.75% 84 months through KHNWAC expires 12 123. Hey Oklahoma, I'm Alan Bowman, quarterback for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. There's a lot of things that us as student athletes have to balance. School and football are huge, but just the pressures of everybody coming in and expecting the most out of everyone. If people are dealing with things that maybe they don't feel comfortable talking with friends or family about, and there's something that really is on their mind that's eating them up, 988's always there to help. It's a great source that you can go to for anything that you're going through. To learn more, head to 988oklahoma.com. Are you ready to sell your industrial warehouse? Mercer Company connects sellers with buyers using their network of industrial real estate professionals. Mercer Company has a buyer and can get you an offer quickly. Reach out today, mercer-company.com. You won't want to miss the 12 deals of Christmas at H&H Shooting Sports. A new deal opens every day leading up to Christmas. Get the Springfield Armory XDM Elite 9mm pistol for $549.99. And take 15% off all beach-made knives just in time for Christmas. Get into H&H Shooting Sports on Christmas Eve for the one-day-only used gun blowout. Take 20% off all used guns on December 24th. Only at H&H Shooting Sports, Oklahoma's headquarters for guns and gear, located just off I-40 in Meridian. We've all heard the old saying that there is strength in numbers, but for the Choctaw Nation, there's also tremendous strength in every individual who helps make us one of America's mightiest tribes. We honor and celebrate people from across the Choctaw Nation who contribute to their communities in a multitude of ways. They are the Choctaw proud, and together, we're more. Hear their stories at togetherwe'remore.com. Now each month, the clock resets and everyone is eligible to become a Johnny's Charcoal Broiler first-time caller. 
Call the Lucky Star lines at 405-900-WWLS and mention you're a Johnny's first-time caller and score $25 credit in the Johnny's app. Remember, mention you're a Johnny's first-time caller and win from 98.1 FM, WWLS, the sports animal. The Metal Store. Proud sponsors of WWLS, the sports animal, your Oklahoma City Thunder flagship station. Welcome back. Huntman's highlights on the sports animal. Craig Humphreys along with Sam Humphreys. All right, Sam, as you know, John Brooks, uh, Brooksy gave me my start in this business. Uh, don't have enough time to tell the whole story now, but I was lucky enough to get to do two seasons of Blazers hockey with the great John Brooks. Did the 93-4 season, 94-5 season, and this is one night in San Antonio. Blazers down to the Iguanas, and a fight breaks out. Here's the great John Brooks. Held at the blue line to Ivory. He fires a skipping shot that goes off the glass. Comes around. Menard trying to hold it in. Knocks it down. Then Burton with it down to DuPont. Penalty coming up. DuPont in behind the goal. Out of the net comes Perry. Blazers trying to get an extra skater on. Perry forcing the, or rather DuPont forcing the puck up. And the Blazers have a man down in the ice. That's Joe Burton. And Craig Lowry is coming out to check him. Joe's going to be okay. He's getting up. And Burton's saying something to Link Gates, who leveled Burton. Gates gave Burton a tough, tough time before. And the goon of the world, Link Gates with his hand in the air, coming in. Burton's over, still saying something at him. I give the little guy credit. He's still yelling at the goon of all goons. 36 now. Overcomes Aubrey and punches Jackson. And Ghost comes after Aubrey. And the fights break out all over the place. Jackson came over to mouth off to Joe Burton, and Aubrey came over and leveled Jackson from behind. And in came Fred Ghost on him to knock Aubrey down. And now Smear is wrapped up with all Smear and Gomes are just talking to each other. The fight is Aubrey and Goltz. And it happened after Jackson came over and said something to Burton and started to do something and Aubrey came over and just laid in the Jackson from behind and then in came Goltz. And now Aubrey takes a punch at Dale Henry. And Todd Anderson comes over to tell Henry to stay out of it. And Aubrey's coming after Henry and reaching over, and there they go after each other. Aubrey and Henry wrapped up. Off come the helmets. Aubrey is beating the living shot out of Henry. Down on top of them comes uh, Dean Spear. He wants in there. Aubrey is whipping the living shot out of Henry right now. And on top of all of them comes Spear along with Gomes. Now Henry turning and taking a punch at Tom Gomes. And I think Henry just hit his own man. He tried to punch Gomes and hit Smear. And Aubrey looks like he may end up with the worst of it now. Yep. Nope. Aubrey looks like he's all right. And he's holding up the index finger saying number one. And Henry is off to the left of the Oklahoma City goal. All of this happening after Gates was penalized on a shot on Burton. Burton said something to Gates, then headed back across the ice. And Paul Jackson was mouthing off to Burton. And Aubrey took a punch on Jackson. And then the Holocaust erupted. We can expect Aubrey to be bye-bye. We can expect Henry to be bye-bye when all of this is done. Players are now paying their own fines in the Central Hockey League. It's not a popular move by any means for the players. On a game of conduct, that's a $25 charge. All fines are now going, whatever team it is assessed to, or a player from a team, to the local youth hockey association. We'll take a pause, 6-4, San Antonio, back in a moment. 
Listen to uh, how loud that place was. Unbelievable. It was tough. It was tough on the players to make money in the Central Hockey League between the money they were paying on fines and then the money they were losing to Brooksy and me in the poker game, the bus. In order. But Brooksy and I, we did get banned. Yeah, we got banned from playing poker on the bus by Mike McEwen, but, but that's another story, Sam. Uh, <laughs> that was but, beautiful. I love smoking <laughs> Joe Burton, too. Smoking Joe Burton. That was, uh, oh, my gosh. That brought back uh, some memories with the great – John Brooks. Okay, uh, real quick, let's let's go ahead and and put the tape back in from your radio debut because also on that tape back at Sports Talk thirteen forty. I mean, we took phone calls all the time. We would conference callers in with each other, Sam, and they would go after each other. It was great. <laughs> and and one day we got UConn on with the Brooklyn Oki. Patty for a couple of college kids. Okay. Now, so that's my new award, the LMR. Now I'm going to give you my picks for the week. I got right. four T's. All right. Hey, we've already got Brooklyn's picks today. Now we're going to hear from Connecticut. Okay. Hey, listen to the spiritual man. Brooklyn still has trouble with his wife. I keep telling him he needs to come to my seminar. <laughs> now, I'm going to go with Tulsa, plus one. I like Texas. And don't I wish I had the ambulance concession at that game? Now, Tulsa's <laughs> going up against Colorado State. They're a two-point dog. Anyway, whatever. We'll give you two on that one. Okay. I like Texas. Texas. You don't have an enough points to give them the ambulance concession you want that i want the, the ambulance concession you know texas is given 22 points it's 21 and a half in tulsa <laughs> but okay. i'll take the 20 i'll give the 22 okay. being a christian man all right i like texas tech texas tech tulsa texas Texas Tech, and here's my final team. Uh, Hump loves Tech also. Uh, Texas Tech, uh, they're getting to you from Kansas. The wrong team is favored there, right, Connecticut? That's exactly right. Wait, what was that? Tulsa, oh, no, Tulsa? I don't know. I don't know if Texas, I don't know if Kansas's tremendous defense is going to be able to help hold tech, Texas Tech under 50. Hey, wait a second. Now, we have a rare opportunity with the, with the great technology that we have here, Connecticut. We can conference you in. We have the Brooklyn Oki on the line. Would you like to talk to him? Put him on. All right, Brooklyn, you got Connecticut on the line. Yes, Webb House in Connecticut. Waterbury. My God. Brass City? The brass capital of the world. Yes, I know all about it. Home of Jimmy Pearsall. You know that I was once on a bondsman walking the fields of, Le- of uh, Weathersfield? <laughs> Weathersfield? Yeah, I used to be an honor bondsman. I used to walk the big yard up there. <laughs> oh, is that right? You might have known some of my relatives. Well, hey, but hey, Brooklyn. You see some of mine. Brooklyn, let me tell you something. Let yeah. me give you a little spiritual advice here. Sports does not come before your wife. Oh, Why listen, up that's here, what buddy. I was I telling her. Call the other day. I was telling her that the other day. I said, honey, you come first. Now can I watch the pros? I want you to know the last thing you should say to your wife, you, you should always get the last word in, and the last word is always the same. Yes, dear. Learn this. Allow me to say this. After 34 years, I don't have any last words. My first words were my last. I do. <laughs> Brooklyn, you hang in there, buddy. Okay, the same to you. Hey, Hump, here's my final pick. All right, wait a second. Piece. Okay, we're cutting off Brooklyn here. Okay. I took wow, you guys, you guys are too much. I'm in tears over here. Okay. You know, I thought for a minute we were listening to WABC in New York or something. We're, <laughs> you know, we, we've tuned to, to New York radio all of a sudden. All right. Hey, Connecticut, now you just had three picks, right? Tulsa? I four. No, I got a fourth pick, huh? What's the other one? The last final T is Tulsa, Texas, Texas Tech, and the Yankees. And the Yankees, where's the T in that one? The. the. Oh, the Yankees. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say <laughs> Temple. I was Did really... you remember, Hump, who told you to... Who told you to take New England, and who told you to take Pittsburgh in our private conversation? Well, I, New England was my lock of the week, and, and I had that one before I talked to you, so that was, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'll take credit for that one. But well, what, 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 what was your other one, traveling. Texas? Pardon me? Texas was your other one? Texas, Texas Tech, Tulsa, and the Yankees. No, I mean last weekend. No, I told you I liked Pittsburgh on Monday night. Oh, Pittsburgh on Monday night, yeah. Okay, I got you. You and Traver. And it's hard for me to pit Pittsburgh, pits, you know, to pick uh, Pittsburgh in that game. You understand why? Uh, why is that? Well, because because you're a big Browns fan. Because the Browns are coming back. <clears throat> the Ravens. And we've got a new plan. What we're doing is we're taking all the Pittsburgh players and we're po- we're storing them over there into Baltimore until we can drum back up in, into Cleveland. <laughs> That's our plan. All right, Connecticut. Well, have a good week, huh? Hey, hey, we've got you down. Thank you. All, all right. right. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, <laughs> Nothing like having the uh, pastor Connecticut call in to give his picks for the week. 
another story. Yukon was once uh, down 97 pizzas to me. That's, that's a true story, back from the days when I lived in Tulsa, back in the mid-70s. All right, we need uh, to take a timeout. That does it for hour number one. Uh, coming back in hour number two, we're gonna. You, you got to stay tuned for this. Jinx Union 2000 coming up next on Huntman's Highlights. WWLS, the sports animal, celebrates the season and wishes you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a happy 2024. Happy holidays from the sports animal. With the kids jingle The annual Bertha Frank Teague Mid-America Classic is one of the longest-running basketball tournaments in the country. Presented by Vision Bank, it tips off again December 28th inside the Kerr Activity Center in Ada, Oklahoma. This high school girls' all-class basketball tournament features some of the state's best, like McAllister, Kingfisher, Washington, and Hartshorn. It's great holiday family fun. Visit BerthaFrankTeague.com. Hey everyone, we're talking interurban. Dean here, along with Russ, Rusty hey, Lefter. Dean, How are you, good pal? Good to see you, brother. Hey. You know, 1976 was started. I know the That's year. 47 straight years. <laughs> 47? Now, yes, in Norman, sir. Uh, there's another streak on Yes, there is. That. And I'll tell you what, let's talk a little Mexican food today. What's your favorite Mexican item? You like those fajitas or the uh, breadfish tacos best? I do love, uh, I would say I'm a fajita man. Yes, sir. But you know, they're all we've everything got quesadillas, straight. sour cream, chicken enchiladas best mexican food around really. oh no it is it but, is but great qualities kind of a and salmon guy aren't you more of a salmon salad type guy yes sir with that great lemon caper vinaigrette dressing and uh man you get a honey blonde beer muffin with it too uh you know i there's something special about that muffin and it, we're bringing the tuna back with the seafood queso on it i understand that uh sashimi grade can we break that story come on all right hey for russ i'm dean come see us at the inner of norman edmund yukon Check it, check. At $10,000 off MSRP or just $7.99 a month, now is your chance to get the truck that does more from the dealer that does more, Bob Moore Ford. Choose from 130 new Ford trucks in stock, like a new 2023 Ford F-150 for $10,000 off MSRP or just $7.99 a month. So head over to Bob Moore Ford, I-35 and Southeast 89th Street or BobMooreFord.com. Stock 1848, 6,000 down 7.9% for 84 months WAC. Open enrollment for health care coverage has been extended. If you miss the initial 12-15 deadline, you can still purchase 2023 coverage up until January 15th. Call Allison Insurance. With over 70 years in the industry, Allison Insurance can help spot problems and avoid common mistakes when purchasing dental, vision, short-term health care coverage, annuities, and more. Visit allisoninsurance.com. Then call Robert at 800-580-5587 or 745-2968. Allison Insurance. They are the experts. Once you get Jersey Mike's catering with 12 subs for any event, I'll tell you, there's no going back to other catering. That would be like going back to using Morse code. Welcome to Jersey Mike's. Okay, here we go. A pickle slice wrapped in a napkin? Oh, wait, try this. A brownie with extra olive oil? Whoops, I mixed up my dots and dashes. Here. 1,800 catering boxes coming right up. Uh-oh. Nope. There's no going back once you get catering at Jersey Mike's. A sub above. This holiday season, head over to Johnny's Charcoal Broiler and treat yourself. Hosting a family or company party, we've got private rooms that set the perfect stage for memorable moments. Or have your guests enjoy the taste of Johnny's at your home with a Johnny's Burger Bar and homemade pies. Sure to make your get-together a flavor-packed celebration. And when it comes time to unwind, join us at the Johnny's Lounge every Thursday and Friday for live music that'll get your toast happen. Make this holiday season a tasteful celebration. The Johnny's Way. The Thunder are at home looking to beat the Clippers tomorrow night at 7 on ESPN 640 and 98.1 FM. WWLS, the sports animal. Broadcasting sponsored by Parrish Devon, official personal injury lawyers of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Visit PepperWinds.com. WWLS FM, the village, Oklahoma City, the sports animal, a cumulus station. Welcome back. Hour number two, Huntman's Highlights. 
And, folks, this does not need a whole lot of introduction. Jinx Union, Alan Trimble, coach at Jinx, Bill Blankenship, coach at Union, Mark Rogers and I did a number of Jinx Union, both regular season and playoff games, a lot of times in the state finals, back in the early 2000s. We take you back to September of 2000, Skelly Stadium, over 31,000, and this was an all-timer, Jinx and Union. Timeout, 2.06 to go in the game, Mark. Let's keep it right here. Union leads it by three, 30 to 27. The Jinx is on the move again. What a drive this has been. They faced a fourth down and three from their own 43-yard line. They hit the tight end, Garrett uh, Mills, for 13 yards and the first down. And now they throw it to Lindemann. Eric Lindemann, the backup tight end, had two catches for 39 yards on the season before tonight. But McCoy, who at times tonight has been shaky, has delivered big time during this drive. McCoy has been a different quarterback since he overthrew the two-point conversion pass in the end zone. It's a play he should have made, Craig, and he was a little bit nervous, looked like he was a little bit hurried, threw the ball over the head of his intended receiver. Since then, he's looked like Joe Montana. I mean, he's done everything right. So Jinx has the ball now down at the Union 13-yard line. They still trail by three. Union leads it by a score of 30-27. 2 6 to go in the game. First down, Jinx. Cooper split to the right side. Mills tied in on the right side. Lindemann tied in on the left side. And now Bowling checks into the game at fullback in front of Kiwan Jones. Scott McCoy is the quarterback. First down, Jinx from the Union 13. Cooper goes in motion to the left side. Double tight end set. And the give is to Kiwan Jones around the right end. Jones cuts in at the five, still on his feet, into the end zone, touchdown. Touchdown, Kiwan Jones with exactly two minutes to go in the game. Jinx is on top. The Trojans waited a long time to take the lead tonight, but with two minutes to go, they finally get their first lead of the ball game, 33-30, extra point pending, Craig, but it seems like that it may not be late enough in the ball game to have the lead. The Union offense will have a chance here, but... Kiwan Jones gets into the end zone again tonight. What a superb game. What a game this has been. Holmes will hold at the north end of the field. Tyler Wilkie will try to tack on the extra point. Wilkie has been perfect this year on extra points. 14 for 14 coming into tonight. This kick is up, and the kick is good. So with two minutes to go, as Mark said, Jinx leads for the first time tonight. They're on top by a score of 34 to 30. Union at one time led this game by a score of 30 to 13. Jinx with three unanswered touchdowns. What a fourth quarter this has been. And Jinx showing why they're the four-time defending state champs in Class 6A. Union brought back eight starters on defense tonight, Craig. When you look at the total offensive numbers tonight that Jinx has put up, some unofficial stats on the scoreboard have it 426 yards of offense tonight for Jinx. I don't know what... We'll check here in a minute, but that over 400 yards against this defense—that's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, it was 10-7 at halftime. We were thought we thought we were looking at a defensive second half, but it just shows uh, the firepower on both of these teams. Kewan Jones, what a big time back! But as we said, Scott McCoy, the quarterback, really delivering a couple of clutch passes. As we said, Jinx faced a fourth and three in that drive from their own 43-yard line. Hit the big pass for 13 yards to Garrett Mills. That was one of the big plays in the drive. Then they hit the other tight end, Lindemann, down the seam, all the way down to the Union 13-yard line. And then Kiwan Jones did the rest as he carried in. So uh, Union now trails for the first time tonight. Officially, that drive was 80 yards in nine plays, 13-yard run by Kiwan Jones. And uh, as we said, the big pass, a 13-yarder to Mills on fourth down. Two minutes to go in the game, and Union... Now trails it by four, 34 to 30. So the extra point was key, Mark, because Union has the win, but a field goal does them no good. They have to score a touchdown to win. Four touchdowns from Kiwan Jones tonight, and uh, Brent Onion Rings Winston is earning his keep. Well, we'll see. Winston's going to take tomorrow night off. He deserves it. What a game this has been. Wilkie will kick it away. Keep to receive is Keith Ford and Ramsey Stevens. Stevens on the near side, Ford on the far side of the field. And a chance for good field position here as Wilkie's kicking into the wind. Stevens is right about the 15-yard line. Union will get the ball in pretty good shape here. All right, here's the boot. High kick into the wind. Hangs up about the 20-yard line. Stevens comes up, takes it 25-yard line. Makes a man miss, 30. 35-yard line almost broke that one as he got out past the 35-yard line. They're going to mark it, I think, 
right at about the 35. So Union is 65 yards away from what could be a touchdown to take the lead and possibly win this game. Jinx has rallied from 17 down, and Jinx now leads it 34 to 30. One minute, 56 seconds left in the game. The ball spotted at the Union, 35. Unbelievable. Look at the Union stands, Craig. A lot of quiet people over here. They're just in shock at this 21-point explosion, and now the crowd comes to its feet. Trips to the left. Janae split to the right side. Hicks covering Janae, man-to-man on the near side. The give is to Trinity Dawson right up the middle. Dawson gets up to about the 39, possibly close to the 40-yard line. Is bowling tackling the ball, throws him back. The gain from the 35 out to the 40, gain of five, second down and five. Clock continues to run, a minute 40 left in the game. Union trails by four. Union's going to have to hurry. They've got two timeouts left. Craig, here's the clock ticks down, close to a minute 30. Trips to the left, Janae split to the right side. Give again to Dawson right up the middle. Another five-yard gain, six yards out to the 46-yard line. First down, clock stops to set the chains. Clock stopped with 126 to go in the game. And again, Jinx leads it by a score of 34 to 30. Bill Blankenship going with that same play back-to-back. Wouldn't be surprised if he's setting up something deep downfield here. Janae in a slot to the right. This time, good. Straight drop back. Has a lot of time back there. Throws left side. Incomplete as he had Sheffield open at the 41-yard line. But the ball was thrown wide and outside. Holmes defending for Jinx. Clock now stopped. 117 to go in the game. Second down and 10, Union. Caleb Blankenship was trying to run it out and up on the other side. But it looked like uh, one of the Jinx defenders had a lot of... Uh, a lot of hands on the jersey there. Blankenship wouldn't let him turn the corner upfield. That's Gooch's first incompletion this half. Chisholm split to the left side. Trips to the left side. Janae split to the right side. This time Gooch out of the shotgun. Single setback is Dawson. Tyler Gooch fakes to Dawson. Now he runs around the right side. A lot of room to the midfield stripe. Down to the 47. He runs out of bounds in Jinx territory at the 47-yard line. Going to be short of a first down. Needed the 44. Going to bring up a third down play. Three yards to go. Clock stop. 113 left. And again, they set that play up by running the dive up the middle on two previous occasions. And Gooch took the ball out of the hand of his fullback and then ran around the right side for a pretty good game. Third and three union from the Jinx 47-yard line. Jinx leads it 34 to 30. Trips to the left. Janae split to the right side. Third down and three. Gooch out of the shotgun, looks right side, has Janae complete, and it will be enough for the first down. Needed to get to the 44 for the first down, and Janae goes down. They're going to mark it at about the 43, maybe inside the 43-yard line. Just a quick little hitch pattern to Jerome Janae. Good for the first down. Stops the clock as they set the chains. 108 to go in the game. And Janae's got to come off the field. He won't be out there for this one. Looked like he had a little bit of a trouble maybe with a cramp that last play. Chisholm split to the right side in for Janae. Sheffield and Blankenship split to the left side. First down Union. Ball spotted just inside the Jinx 43-yard line. Gooch this time. Play action fake. is going to be sacked by Brandon Lohr back at the Union 49-yard line. Gooch up quickly. Asked for the timeout. Clock stopped. 50 seconds to go in the game. Gooch couldn't get away from Brandon Lohr. He came on a speed rush from the backside, and uh, Tyler Gooch tried to make a move but slipped he down. Had no chance. And uh, Lohr is, is a really tough player, but Gooch immediately gets up. A heady play calls for the timeout, so uh, no extra time expires on the clock. So 50 seconds left to go in the game. Union's got one timeout. We'll see if Jerome Janae looks like he's all right. He'll get back out there for the next play. Second down and 15 to go. Yeah. So they got their work Thanks. cut out for him. Yeah, I, I think he lost uh, eight on that one mark really officially from the 42. They're going to mark it back to the midfield stripe. So second down and 18 from the midfield stripe. 50 seconds to go in the game. Jinx leads it by a score of 34 to 30. They have stormed back after being down 30 to 13. Jinx has taken the lead. So second down and 18. Now Union with their back to the wall. Janae is back into the game. Trips to the left side. Trinity Dawson in the game. Single setback. And Gooch is under center this time from the midfield stripe. Here we go. Tyler Gooch swings it out to Dawson from behind him. He gets it at the 45, 50, 45, down to the 40, 35, 30, 25, down to the 20. He's bumped out of bounds by Clink at the 20-yard line. They're going to spot it maybe inside the Jinx 20. Clock stop with 42 seconds to go in the game. Dawson on the swing pass for about 30 yards. 
The same play that has been so successful all night. Weak side of the field. Jerome Janae runs man down the field. Again, they go to Trinity Dawson. The pass thrown a little bit behind this time. If Dawson didn't have to stop to make the catch, he might have been gone the distance. But, uh, again, a great call by Blankenship. They're inside the Jinx 20. Give him officially 31. They spotted inside the 20, so for bookkeeping, we'll call it the 19-yard line. Ball spotted at the 19-yard line, and and uh, got a jinx player. Looks like they're, yeah, they're attending to a jinx player at the 35-yard line. We'll keep it right here. Down on the field is Big Derek Chris. What a game he has played on both sides of the ball, Mark. I'll tell you what. To be out there a majority of the time on offense and defense tonight, he'll have to. Uh, He'll earn his time in the Whirlpool tomorrow. I mean, that is yeoman's duty. Okay, again, Union has the football. Ball spotted at the Jinx 19. 42 seconds to go in the game. Union trailing by four. Jinx leads it 34-30 to 30 with 42 seconds to go. It'll be first down, Union. And again, Chris up being attended to out on the field. Chris up big 6'2", 255 senior. And as we said, uh, he's been all over the field. Played a great game tonight for Jinx. So what a comeback for Jinx. And now Union, as they uh, began this uh, drive, Brent, uh, let's see, on what yard line? Uh, on the 35-yard line. That's right. They needed to go 65 yards, and so far they've gone from their own 35 down to the Jinx 19. What more can you say about this game? I mean, it's been, it's been unbelievable. Hey, I think this is the best we've done in, in our three years, uh, maybe even better than that 5A final. Uh, with El Reno and Carl Albert, which went down to the last play last year. That was a good one. I mean, this had it all. It was yeah. a defensive struggle in the first half. It's been an offensive, uh, uh, just an offensive showcase here in the second half. We've had it uh, running. We've had it passing. We've had good play from, from both quarterbacks. Hey, and stay tuned for Al Ashback late night at Othello's, which is really going to be a late one tonight as uh, it's 20 till 11 at Skelly Stadium in Tulsa. All right, Crisp is back on his feet. And he's gingerly walking off the field, and he has a walk. He'll have to walk all the way across to the east side of the field. So Union from the Jinx, 19-and-a-half yard line. They trail by four, 34-30, to 30, 42 seconds to go in the game. If you just tuned in, you've missed a great one. Unbelievable. 42 seconds to decide it right here. All right, now Union coming to the uh, near side of the field. I don't think that they've taken a timeout, the official now, coming over here to have a little chat. They certainly don't need to take a timeout after that long of a delay. The official now is uh, saying that All right, they're confusing on the field. All right, 42 seconds to go. We're about set for play. Chisholm, Sheffield, and Blankenship to the left side, Janae to the right side. Dawson's a single setback, and Gooch will operate out of the shotgun. Tyler Gooch, the quarterback. Gooch, long snap count, drops back. Now he looks, throws right side for Janae. It's incomplete. Nice coverage on the play by Travis Hicks. Incomplete. Clock stop, 36 seconds to go. Kirk Seifried was back there in, 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 in uh, Gooch's face. Looked like he threw the pass for Janae and almost picked off. Hicks was able to get in there and get a hand on it, tip it away from Janae at the last second, but Gooch, I think, forced to throw that ball just a little bit earlier because of the pressure from Seifert. Picks a veteran, returning starter for Jinx. Trips to the left, Janae split to the right side. Gooch again out of the shotgun, second down and 10 from the Jinx 19-yard line. And now Gooch on the quarterback draw, puts it back to the right side, breaks the tackle the 15 down to the 13-yard line. Gains six on the play, it'll be third down and four o'clock. Stopped with 27 seconds to go in the game. Union takes a timeout. We'll keep it right here. That's their final timeout, so 27 seconds. This is a big play in the ball game, and they've got it spotted around the 13, so he'll need to get the ball between the 9 and 10-yard line here. And let's see where they do spot it. They spot it right at the 13. All right, so it's really, like you say, Mark, about three and a half. I mean, for bookkeeping, it's four, but it's really closer to three and a half yards to go for the first down, which would stop the clock. 27 seconds to go in the game, and as you say, Union has taken their final timeout. Jinx leads it 34 to 30. I'll tell you what, you are, I think you're tremendously safe if you run Janae about five yards down the field and have him turn around, and yeah. I think that's going to be there all night because Jerome Janae has such explosion off the line. you got to give him a, a cushion of a step or two over there at corner. So, uh, and again, they have trips to the left, Janae to the short side of the field. The ball on the right hash mark, and Janae split to the right side, covered man-to-man -man by Travis Hicks. 
Gooch out of the shotgun. Single setback is Trinity Dawson. Third down and about three and a half from the Jinx 13-yard line. Gooch dropping back, has time. Now the protection breaks down. He scrambles to the right side, looks, throws into the end zone, wide open to Rome Janae. Touchdown! Touchdown, Redskins! With 21 seconds to go in the game, Union is back on top, 36-34. And the big-time playmakers have made plays. Jerome Janay ran in the end zone and then turned around. He lost his man, no one around him, and Gooch was able to have the presence of mind in the pocket to throw the ball. A perfect strike to Jerome Janay, and Union is back on top, 36-34. Unbelievable. 31,555 have enjoyed this one tonight. There might even be close to 35,000 now. I think a few people had to come in late for this one. Gibbons will try to tack it on at the south end of the field. The extra point is up. It is good. So that was key because it gives Union now a three-point lead at 37-34 with 21 seconds to go in the game. A 13-yard pass from Tyler Gooch to the blue chipper, Jerome Janae. And, Craig, he's been such a difference tonight. Even when he's not catching the football, he's put so much pressure on that weak side of the field for Jinx. It's just evil alive. And those Jinx defensive backs are going to see nightmares in their sleep of number one tonight, not knowing where he was. And they lost sight of him in the end zone there. He made a nice adjustment. And Tyler Gucci was looking to the far, looking to the strong side of the field, looked back to the weak side, and found Janae wide open in the back of the end zone. It was a great play, not only from Janae to get open, but from Tyler Gooch. Capping that drive, Craig, it was 10 plays, 65 yards, a 13-yard pass. It ends at 21 seconds, show on the clock, 37-34. Wow. All I can say is I don't know what to say to, to describe this game. It's been a great one. You have to feel bad for Jinx. They made such a great comeback. Uh, Gooch, he's had a nice night tonight throwing the football. Only a couple of incompletions, I think, in the second half. He's thrown for 206 yards. He's a playmaker at quarterback. He's a good one. There is a lot of talent. When you think of the alumni that have come out of this, these two teams oh, yeah. the last couple of years, talking about Josh Blankenship, Rocky Kalmus. I know last year we said uh, uh, that uh, just, uh, I think, uh, Union alone had 14 players uh, playing Division One football. I'll tell you what, uh, Jerome Janae, Bobby Clink, and Kiwan Jones are as good as anybody that's ever put on a helmet at either one of these schools. All right, Gibbons will kick it away. The deep man... Uh, Clink now is back to receive the kick and also deep uh, to receive Kiwan Jones, but this one will carry into the end zone, and Jones will not have an opportunity. It will come out to the 20-yard line. So 21 seconds to go. Jinx will have to go a long way to get in field goal range because they'd have to kick it into the wind, Mark. See anybody leaving? No, I don't think so. I don't either. 21 seconds uh, will seem like an eternity to this uh, Union defense right here. I'll tell you what, they got... Uh, Kiwan Jones, he's a home run hitter. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go 80. Union back on top, 37-34. It's been an all-timer of a game here tonight at Skelly Stadium. All right. The single setback this time is Kerwin Vanfield in the game. Straight drop back. McCoy looks, throws over the middle. He's got Kiwan Jones. Jones at the midfield strike. 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Jakes. Touchdown, Kiwan Jones, with eight seconds to go in the game. 80 yards. I don't believe what I've just seen. You're not kidding. That's an 80-yard touchdown pass from Scott McCoy to Kiwan Jones in the slot. Kiwan Jones has scored for the fifth time tonight. His total offensive numbers are going to be unbelievable. Mark, what a play. I just said I wouldn't be surprised to see Kiwan Jones go 80. But I looked in the backfield through my binoculars and saw it was Banfield and then realized that Jones was in the slot. He goes over the middle, catches it, and takes it 80 yards for the touchdown to put Jinx on top. The extra point at the north end of the field is good. Jinx is back on top, 41-37. to 37. Eight seconds to go in the game. I've seen it all. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Kiwan Jones caught that ball across the middle of the field. Got to the boundary, 305 yards of total offense, Brent Winston says tonight from Kiwan Jones. How did he outrun the Union defense? With 21 seconds to go in the game, Craig, how what do you not have somebody defense? playing back there? How does that happen? Kiwan Jones is the fastest man ever to put on sneakers. I mean, unbelievable. You, you can't let that happen. 
I mean, we just said I wouldn't be surprised to see him go 80, but I really didn't think he'd go 80. I mean, that was, that's incredible. With the speed that, that Union has in the back end, it's unbelievable that he could do that. All right. Eight seconds to go on this one. I'm not going to say it's over. We've seen it all tonight under the full moon at Skelly Stadium. You see anybody leaving? No. All right. Winston's about on his fourth page here, but 80-yard drive in one play. Jinx officially on top, 41-37, eight seconds to go in this game. Now, normally they don't have Janae back to receive the kick. I would put Jerome Janae back there, but he's not back there. You got Ramsey Stevens back there, along with Keith Ford. I don't know. I, you know, We'll see. We'll see if they have anything, uh, a Cal Stanford play, possibly. Well, I mean, I that's know. the only thing we haven't seen tonight. Nothing would shock me here. <laughs> I don't know what you do if you're Jinx. I don't know if you don't just uh, kick the ball out of bounds or try to kick it right off one of the guys up front or or what you do. But Tyler Wilkie will kick it away. Stevens on the near side, Ford on the far side. And the kick comes to Stevens, fumbles the ball at the 28-yard line, now retreats looking for running room back at the 25. Light drills the ball back to a man back at the 20-yard line, and he's going to be snowed under at the 20. And time has run out. This one is over. Jinx wins it by a score of 41-37. And the Jinx players mobbing the field. This was an all-timer. I don't care what happens in the 6A title game. There's nothing that can top this one tonight. Jinx wins it 41-37. Well, you could live to be an old man and not ever see a better football game than that. Uh, unbelievable. An unbelievable ending, an unbelievable second half. Uh, and Kiwan Jones showed that he is a difference maker tonight. He was a difference maker in the second half. What he did this evening, I think, has got to be up there. For me, the best individual performance I've ever seen on a football field tonight comes from Kiwan Jones. Uh, sensation. Unbelievable, and it's great. It's a great sight right now to look down at the field and to see the players from both teams lined up and shaking hands, congratulating each other. After one of the great games, it's the, it's the best high school game I've ever seen, and maybe 41-37. Jinx was down by a score of 30 to 13. They battled back. They took a 34 to 30 lead, but then Union goes 65 to take a 37-34 lead, and Jinx, with only 21 seconds to go in the game, they had to go 80 yards, and they do it in one play with the pass to Kiwan Jones. Have you ever seen a more average play come up with a more spectacular result? I mean, I think that's right. a testament to Kiwan right. Jones' athletic ability, Craig. He caught a ball, a simple ball over the middle. He weaved yeah. his way through the Union defense, got to the sidelines, and it was a no contest. Right. Once he gets to the sideline, you're not going to catch him. Jerome Janae has got to be 4-4 in the 40 or sub-4-4 in the 40, but there was no catching Kiwan Jones on that play. We will take... A short timeout. Let's just uh, go ahead and maybe take a one-minute timeout. One minute because timeout. Al Ashback is waiting for late night at Othello's, and we want to get it done by midnight. We'll take a one-minute timeout. Be back to Skelly Stadium. It's been a wild one. Jinx wins it, 41-37. You're listening to the OG&E Sports Animal Game of the Week. Was that crazy, Sam? I have goosebumps, and I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> oh, what a that call, was... Dad. Oh, that was a great one, and, and Mark Rogers, and Mark has covered far more uh, football and basketball uh, than I have in the uh, how many years, 23 years since that night, uh, but that, that was a great one. I'll always remember that one. Uh, never seen a better uh, football game. I don't know, maybe, you know, high school, college, pro, we've seen a lot of great ones. Uh, but that was a great one that night in September of 2000. All right, we'll take a timeout. We will come back. Uh, we'll go back to Tulsa. Uh, we'll jump forward, what, a little more than another, or almost another year later, maybe nine months later. Uh, we'll, we'll jump uh, to Tulsa in 2001, 2001 U.S. Open. Coming up next on Huntman's Highlights. The man with the gold balls. You, yes, you, our listeners, are always part of the sports conversation. And thanks to Johnny's Charcoal Broiler, each month you can get rewarded when you call in. Oh, Johnny's Charcoal Broiler is the first time call me. That's right. Each month, everyone is available to be a Johnny's Charcoal Broiler first time caller on the Lucky Star Line at 405 900 WWLS. Score free credit inside the Johnny's app. Make sure to download the app today. Call in, mention you're a first time caller, and you win. And now the clock resets each. 
each month. 405-900-WWLS from Johnny's Charcoal Broiler and 98.1 FM. WWLS, the sports animal, the sports animal.com and the sports animal app. If you're in your- Brody and Jeremy here with Randy Bowen Chevrolet in Chandler, Oklahoma. We've been making great deals for our customers for over 24 years. But i only been doing it for five, right, Dad? That's right, Brody. So whether you've trusted us for 24 years or five, we welcome you back to Chandler. Have you never been? Well, we invite you to come see the easy way to buy a Chevrolet with Randy Bowen Chevrolet. Located in Chandler, Oklahoma. Exit 166. Randy Bowen Chevrolet, we do it different. Different by design. Randy Bowen Chevrolet, you're going to love it. The new year with a bang only at lucky star casino join us for the ultimate celebration with your chance to win two thousand twenty four dollars cash win big and start 2024 on a lucky note live entertainment thrilling games and a chance to fill your pockets with cash don't miss the countdown to a fortune filled night only at lucky star casino head to any of our six oklahoma locations lucky star casino the biggest jackpots are closer than you think Deciding where to eat can be tricky. Louie's has got you covered. Where pizza, cheeseburgers, wings, sandwiches, and tacos live in perfect menu harmony. Football watching is awesome at Louie's. With its friendly staff, full bar, and locations in your neighborhood, the only thing you need to decide is dine in or carry out. Visit louisgrillandbar.com for more info. Hey everyone, we're talking interurban. Dean here, along with Russ, Rusty hey, Lefter. Dean, How are you, good pal? Good to see you, brother. Hey. You know, 1976 was I started. know the That's year. 47 straight years. <laughs> 47? Now, yes, in sir. Norman, uh, there's another streak on Yes, there that. is. And uh, I'll tell you what, let's talk a little Mexican food today. What's your favorite Mexican item? You like those fajitas or the uh, breadfish tacos best? I do love, uh, I would say I'm a fajita man. Yes, sir. But you know, they're all, we've got quesadillas, straight. sour cream, chicken enchiladas. Best Mexican food around. Really. Oh no, it is. It but, is but great you're qualities kind of a and salmon fresh. guy, aren't you? More of a salmon salad type guy, yes, sir. With that great lemon caper vinaigrette dressing, and uh, man, you get a honey blonde beer muffin with it too. Uh, you know, I, there's something special about that muffin. And we're bringing the tuna back with the seafood queso on it. I understand that uh, sashimi grade. Can we break that story? Come on. All right. Hey, for Russ, I'm Dean. Come see us at the Inter Norman Edmund Yukon. Aminis has everything for your home and now traditional and infrared saunas. Check out our store wide savings, including PGA Golden Tea, pinball machines, pool tables, shuffleboard, home furnishings, bar stools, outdoor furniture, and so much more. Save 60 to 80% off hand knotted area rugs. Get immediate delivery and 72 month no interest financing. Call chat or come see us at 525 west memorial this is amini's we know your kids come first at warden and carpenter we fight for you in the best possible outcome from custody or visitation matters to adoption choose the right choice warden and carpenter warden and carpenter the smart choice call the team at warden and carpenter today 405-360-8036 or visit wardenfirm.com that's W-O-R-D-E-N firm dot com. We are in the Mixer Showroom. With hundreds of Christmas gifts sparkling in our showcase. Look at that stud. Ooh, where? What? She must be looking at our case of diamond stud earrings. Oh. Starting under $400. We've got brilliant freeborn diamond studs. And ravishing forever after earrings. Our diamond bracelets are popular this year, too. They're gorgeous. Nothing says I love you like diamonds. And Michener Farron has them all. And Mark? Yeah? You're the only stud I need. Merry Christmas, babe. Thanks to everyone and all of the local businesses that donated to the 12 Days of Spinozzi supporting OK City Center, powered by OG&E. Spinozzi, along with an OG&E volunteer, made trips across the metro and the state in an electric vehicle powered by OG&E, collecting donations, toys, and more to make Christmas wishes come true at OK City Center. Check out the awesome auction items up for bid now to help raise even more money at thesportsanimal.com and the Sports Animal app. 
Arizona Sports Animal Studios, powered by the OKC Thunder. NBA. It's on the Sports Animal, Craig Humphreys, along with Sam Humphreys. Let's jump forward to the 2001 U.S. Open at Southern Hills. It's a playoff after a crazy finish on the 18th green on Sunday involving Stuart Sink and Mark Brooks and Retief Goosen. Short putts were missed, and when all was said and done, it was a playoff on Monday between Retief Goosen and Mark Brooks. Uh, I was working with Westwood One. Most of the guys had to go home after Sunday, so... Uh, on Monday, I was the only one out on the course. I called every shot of that playoff. If there was a birdie or something dramatic happened, they would use it on the Westwood One update at the top of the hour on uh, CBS Radio. So let's go to that U.S. Open playoff between Mark Brooks and Retief Goosen. We got U.S. Open update on the sports animal. <laughs> Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Westwood One Radio Sports presents a special report on the U.S. Open Championship. Hi, this is Chris Castleberry. We are here on this Monday for an 18-hole playoff because several players could not find a way to win this 101st United States Open Championship after 72 holes. We knew early on yesterday that Tiger Woods would not win it. Big names like Phil Mickelson had a shot, so did David Duvall, but as is becoming a pattern, they faded on Sunday. Sergio Garcia and Rocco Mediate also came up short. Down the stretch, the championship was up for grabs. Stewart Sink, Mark Brooks, and Retief Goosen, all three eyed the prize, and all three blundered on the final hole. The worst came from Retief Goosen. He had just 20 inches to win the Open. Retief Goosen of South Africa is over it. Taps it. He misses it! Oh, my goodness! And he pushes it five feet past. So with that incredible three-putt created today's playoff, and Mitch Voges, Mark Brooks, and Retief Goosen, they both faltered. How do you think they slept last night? Well, I think Brooks probably slept a little better than Goosen, although if Goosen would have made his, it would have been a long night for Mark Brooks. This is exclusive coverage of the U.S. Open from Westwood One. Okay, bear with me. Uh, shade tree <laughs> engineering here. All right, let's see. To make an early statement, Craig Humphreys was there. Mark Brooks. Five feet for birdie here at number three. If he drops, they can take the lead. Putting up the hill, ball should break just to the right. He drops it in. Mark Brooks strikes first. He has a one-shot lead after three holes. And Mitch Voges, your assessment of the match so far? Well, Chris, as you might expect, the guys seem to be a little bit tight. Mark Brooks is having the better of it so far. He's hit four of the you know, four fairways getting right out the box. Uh, Retief Goosen's having some problem, and how ironic for Retief Goosen through the first five holes, he's four putted four of them. So his putter's back on track like it was for the rest of the week. From Tulsa, Oklahoma, I'm Chris Castleberry, Westwood One Radio Sports. WWLS, the sports animals coverage of the U.S. Open Golf Championship is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. All right, thanks for the call, and uh, we're going to go ahead and go to our U.S. Open update. Alan, Josh, hang on, we will get your phone call after the update. Coming up, a look. From Southern Hills, from Westwood One. From Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Westwood One Radio Sports presents this special report on the U.S. Open Championship. Hi, this is Chris Castleberry with bonus coverage of the 18-hole playoff between Retief Goosen and Mark Brooks for the U.S. Open Championship. Both had great chances to claim the title yesterday, but a pair of three putts put these two in mano a mano mode. Through six holes, the match was all square. Brooks went on to bogey number seven and par eight. Goosen went par par. And then at number nine, Goosen was golden. Craig Humphreys was greenside. Retief Goosen with a one-shot lead as he came to number nine, put his second shot 15 feet just to the left of the hole. He has a downhill putt. This putt should have a pretty big break to the right. Goosen to go two under. Plays about four feet of break. Now the ball moving to the right, moving to the right. He drops it. Retief Goosen with a birdie on number nine to make the turn in two under par. And Mitch Voges, unfortunately, Brooks bogeyed number nine to go three down at that point. Well, the biggest problem with Mark Brooks is he was leading in fairways and greens and greens in regulation for the first 72 holes, and now the wheels have basically come off. You can't score in the U.S. Open from the trees in the rough. Okay, we'll be back with more in just a moment. This is exclusive coverage of the U.S. Open from Westwood One. All right, more shade tree engineering. Merrill Lynch's expertise in fixed income securities. Call a financial advisor or 1-800-MERRILL or visit askmerrill.ml.com. 
And we're back, Mitch. Things are starting to not look too good for Mark Brooks. Well, Mark Brooks, as we said, the wheels are coming off. He's bogey three of the last four holes, and certainly when you only hit three greens in the first ten holes in the U.S. Open, you're heading for problems. Conversely, Retief Goose and three birdies in the last six holes. Craig Humphreys, you're out there. You notice any difference in their in their body language? Or I mean, that's four stroke turnaround the last two holes. Well, Brooks is just having a tough time driving the ball. He drove it left on number nine and, and right on number ten. Yeah, the the lie on number ten was the worst lie I've ever seen. Well, you got to keep him in the center of the fairway out here. You're going to pay the piper, Chris. Okay, from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm Chris Castleberry, Westwood One Radio Sports. <laughs> From Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Westwood One presents this special report of the U.S. Open Championship. Hi, this is Chris Castleberry. We bring you live coverage on the back nine of this 18-hole playoff between Mark Brooks and Retief Goosen. The big swing in this match came right around the turn. At number nine, Goosen birdied while Brooks bogeyed. At number ten, the same thing happened for a four-shot swing right there. At number 14, Goosen faced his first test down the stretch. Well, Mark Brooks already in with his par here at 14. Retief Goosen, seven feet for par to stay five shots up. And he just curls it in the left side. Retief Goosen saves par here at number 14. Still has a five-shot lead. Craig Humphreys following these two guys today. Mitch Voges, the 1991 U.S. Amateur Champion. Problem for Mark Brooks, just can't buy a fairway? Well, Brooks is hitting the ball all over the place in here. The drivers he's hit, he's hit sideways. He converse to that. Retief Goosen had seven one putts in the first nine holes. In the last eight holes, he's hit seven of the eight greens. That's why he's got command of this situation. All right, down the stretch, you've got some of the toughest holes on this golf course. No question about it. If Retief can make two pars in the next, in the next uh, four holes in here, he'll basically close the door. I think it'd be almost impossible for Brooks to birdie all four of them. This is exclusive coverage of the U.S. Open from Westwood One. And block out the demons down the stretch. Well, what he's doing is with conservative play off the tee, Chris. He's hitting a lot of two irons, just trying to keep the pl ball in play. Meanwhile, he's watching Mark Brooks self-destruct off the tee. He's hacked it about five or six times, just trying to get it down the fairway. All right, let's get out to Craig Humphreys at 15. Craig, what's up quickly? Mark Brooks with a pretty opportunity here at 15. Gustin also on the green. Brooks still five shots back. All right, Mitch, a couple of seconds left here. Uh, any place these guys can make a move here one way or the other. Well, it's going to take a, it's going to take a miracle finish right now for Brooks. He's going to have to birdie in, I think, or at least three of the next four. All right, we'll see what happens from Tulsa. I'm Chris Castleberry, Westwood One Radio Sports. From Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Westwood One presents this special report on the U.S. Open Championship. Hi, this is Chris Castleberry with live coverage of the 18-hole playoff between Mark Brooks and South African Rakitif Goosen. Through six holes, the match was all square. This playoff turned on holes 9 and 10. Goosen birdied both. Brooks suffered bogeys. Retief held a five-shot lead through 16 holes. Once again, down the stretch, Goosen faltered with a bogey at 17, while Brooks finally got a birdie. At 18, things got a little tense. Goosen almost laid an egg. Here's Craig Humphreys with the call just moments ago. If he two putts, he wins the U.S. Open. The putt is on the way, and Retief Goosen is a 2001 champion of the U.S. Open. Retief Goosen dropping a seven-foot putt for bogey here at number 18 at Southern Hills. And Mitch Voges, it did get interesting on the 18th hole. Again, Goosen, uh, the, the, the neck got a little little tight there, but he did he did pull it out. What were your thoughts there? Well, for all the blunders of guys like Doug Sanders and Bill Buckner and John Vandeveld and Scott Hoke and Greg Norman and Scott Norwood, it's nice to see a guy get a second chance and cash it in. So I'm happy for, for Retief Goosen to be able to pull this one out. And this is exclusive coverage of the U.S. Open from Westwood One. And, Sam, I, I interviewed uh, Retief Goosen on the 18th green that day at uh, Southern Hills after he won that one. I I'm sure that was him. entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I also caught him at the top of the hill at Shinnecock three years later when he won that one at Shinnecock. So he is a two-time U.S. Open champion. No, that was fine. I mean, we're, we're lucky to have Southern Hills in Oklahoma, and obviously they hosted that the 2001 uh, U.S. Open um, uh, also hosted the 1977 U.S. Open that, that Hubie Green run, uh, won. They've hosted uh, so many different PGAs, hosted one that, that uh, Ray Floyd won back in the early 80s and and uh, still hosting majors at Southern It Hills. was cool to hear Mitch's voice as well in that. Yeah, no, no question. And and that was, you know, that broke the, the uh, Tiger Slam at um, the 2001 uh, U, U.S. Open. I mean, uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, 2001 U.S. Open at uh, Southern Hills. Uh, 
they shut down Tiger Woods uh, at, at that one. Tiger uh, did not have the answer that day, although he would in 2007 at Southern Hills. Okay, uh, we will take a time out when we come back. Um, we're going to hear from my brother, uh, Kirk Humphreys, uh, the morning after he became the mayor of Oklahoma City. That's coming up next on Huntman's Highlights on Sports Animal. This is your Oklahoma City Thunder All Access Pass, sponsored by Oklahoma Farm Bureau Insurance. Now here's Gideon Hamilton on WWLS, the Sports Animal. There's still another day before Oklahoma City resumes action. Head coach Mark Degnall on why he's confident giving Kaysen Wallace minutes in his rookie season. The reason we trust him is he's very efficient on the offensive end of the floor. You know, he takes the right shots, he keeps the ball moving, he's a great spacer, and then defensively he can guard, you know, and, and guard reliably. As we know, guys that compete like that and play like that, they improve quickly. The Thunder hosts the Los Angeles Clippers tomorrow night. This has been your Oklahoma City Thunder All Access Pass on your Oklahoma City Thunder flagship station, WWLS. The Sports Animal. We are in the Mixer Showroom. With hundreds of Christmas gifts sparkling in our showcase. Look at that stud. Ooh, where? What? She must be looking at our case of diamond stud earrings. Oh. Starting under $400. We've got brilliant freeborn diamond studs. And ravishing forever after earrings. Our diamond bracelets are popular this year, too. They're gorgeous. Nothing says I love you like diamonds. And Mitchner Farron has them all. And Mark? Yeah? You're the only stud I need. Merry Christmas, babe. At $10,000 off MSRP or just $7.99 a month, now is your chance to get the truck that does more from the dealer that does more. Bob Moore Ford. Choose from 130 new. What are you talking about? Like, talk about this league to people. It just doesn't make any, any sense. I won a regular season by three games this year in a very competitive league, bounced in the first round of the playoffs. My team, it was more than a one-week deal. I had multiple chargers on my team. This is why I can't stand Brandon Staley, one of the reasons. Uh, it's <laughs> Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler, just completely disappointing. So, But the good news about that league is they pay the regular season. If everybody makes the playoffs, you need to be rewarded for winning the regular season. And, and otherwise, it doesn't even matter. No, it, it, it's it's strange. By the way, I do have to tell you, you are you're playing the Italian stallion, Bobby. He was able to dispatch me last week, so I, I'm out. I thought I was playing you. No, 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 Bobby. You're going up against Bobby's team, who is uh, it's quite salty, I may say. I think the league commissioner may have uh, may have uh, suspended Bobby's team. I don't know. When I looked today. I thought that it was. <laughs> oh, I'm not playing you in the fantasy basketball league. That's on the same app. Oh yeah, That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Too many leagues. Too many leagues. Team stallion. Fifty-two percent to my forty-eight percent. We'll see how it goes. All right. So the point of all this is that when we come back, we're going to give you some advice this week on what you should do uh, because the fantasy football playoffs are kind of tricky. Guys like Jake Browning, Baker Mayfield are uh, dominating quarterbacks. That, uh, like for example, last week Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Who do you start this week? Are there people out there on the waiver wire even at this point in time that you can pick up that gives you a chance to win your league? So. We'll give you a little tutorial right here on the middle of a day show. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Mark Rogers with you in the middle of the day show. Matt Ravis is in studio. All right, fantasy football. Last week, here are the top quarterbacks in the league. Jared Goff, Baker Mayfield. Jared Goff threw five touchdown passes last week, three to Sam Laporta. How, how, many, how many drafts did Sam Laporta go in? He was, I can look up his average draft position. He was not, you know, those rookie tight ends are never usually a good bet. Usually you struggle. There are five jewelry pieces every woman should have in her jewelry box. And any one of them would make a perfect Christmas gift. The five jewelry box basics are... A pair of diamond stud earrings. A solitaire diamond necklace. A tennis bracelet. A diamond fashion ring. And diamond hoop earrings. We've got the grandest assortment of essential jewelry pieces you have ever seen under one roof. Make it a Christmas to remember. Only at Michener Farron. At $10,000 off MSRP or just $7.99 a month, 
Now is your chance to get the truck that does more from the dealer that does more, Bob Moore Ford. Choose from 130 new Ford trucks in stock, like a new 2023 Ford F-150 for $10,000 off MSRP or just $7.99 a month. So head over to Bob Moore Ford, I-35 and Southeast 89th Street or BobMooreFord.com. Stock 1848, 6000 down 7.9% for 84 months WAC. Brody and Jeremy here with Randy Bowen Chevrolet in Chandler, Oklahoma. We've been making great deals for our customers for over 24 years. But I only been doing it for five, right, Dad? That's right, Brody. So whether you've trusted us for 24 years or five, we welcome you back to Chandler. Have you never been? Well, we invite you to come see the easy way to buy a Chevrolet with Randy Bowen Chevrolet. Located in Chandler, Oklahoma. Exit 166. Randy Bowen Chevrolet, we do it different. Different by design. Randy Bowen Chevrolet, you're going to love it. The new year with a bang only at Lucky Star Casino. Join us for the ultimate celebration with your chance to win $2,024 cash. Win big and start 2024 on a lucky note. Live entertainment, thrilling games, and a chance to fill your pockets with cash. Don't miss the countdown to a fortune filled night only at Lucky Star Casino. Head to any of our six Oklahoma locations. Lucky Star Casino. The biggest jackpots are closer than you think. The Oklahoma City Thunder play the Los Angeles Clippers tomorrow night at the Paycom Center. Coverage begins at 5.30 p.m. with the Thunder Forecast pregame show built by the Metal Store with Gideon Hamilton and Matt Ravis live with the Michelob Ultra Team. Tip off after 7 p.m. with Matt Pinto on the call and the Thunder recap live from Gaiutis immediately following the game. Hear it all on ESPN 640 AM, Spanish available at 9.30 AM, and you can always catch the Thunder right here at 98.1 FM, WWLS, the sports animal. Lucky Star Casino. What time is it? Proud sponsors of WWLS, the sports animal, your Oklahoma City Thunder flagship station. Welcome back to Huntman's Highlights on the Animal. Craig Humphreys along with Sam Humphreys. And so, Sam... Uh, let's fast forward to April 8th of 1998. I was down at the Masters. It was my first year with a press pass at the Masters. I had just fallen down. the My very first day at the Masters um, with a press pass, I was so in awe of being there. I'm going down the stairs looking through the windows in the press center, and I'm carrying all this great big equipment, <laughs> and I missed a stair, and I fell down, and my left leg went, you know, under me, and I fell backwards with all this heavy equipment and just totally ripped my quad. Uh, oh. But that's what happened on, on day one. They were probably and, thinking, uh, who is this new guy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, then I guess it was Tuesday. Maybe it was Tuesday of that week because it was the day that, that Kirk, my brother, is elected mayor. So we, we came over. The Sports Animal started basically in the summer of 98, but we came over from Sports Talk 1340, you know, Trey Abe and Mark Rogers and, and, and Curtis and, and, you know, all, all Dan Lutz, obviously. But um, we all came in January of 98, to start 1998. Then Kirk was elected mayor uh, in early April. And then BBJ and Al joined us to really form the sports animal in the summer of 98. But this is in April of 98. And so really up until then, you know, uh, I was a lot better known than Kirk. And then he won up me by running for mayor and winning. And so here I am with Dan Lutz early in the morning, the morning after Kirk wins the Oklahoma City mayor contest. And bring in the new mayor-elect for Oklahoma City. I understand he won by, I understand he got like two-thirds of the vote last night. Let's bring him in. My brother, I guess I have to call you Mayor Humphreys now, right? I'll tell you, you better treat me with more respect than you ever have in the past. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kirk, congratulations, and this is the first time that I've had a chance to talk to you. And uh, I've had to be very careful for the last month or so with this election, maybe a couple of months, uh, uh, because I couldn't say anything about this on the air, and I guess now we can talk about it on the air, huh? Yeah, we've been incognito, huh? <laughs> well, uh, Blair, Blair, uh, uh, Blair told me last night, this is my 15-year-old son, but for the listeners, Blair told me last night, he says, Dad, 
we need to lie to Augusta and take that pass away from Craig because he can't go see the tournament with a bad back. <laughs> I was going to ask you guys, well, did any one of you guys want to trade places? Would you want to be the mayor, uh, Craig, or uh, no. Kirk, would you like to be at Augusta? Well, Craig is far too smart to either leave Augusta or become mayor, so uh, I think he's got me on that one, Dan. That, that was my that was going to be my first question, Kirk. Was what were you thinking uh, when you decided to run for mayor? Well, I decided I could either run for mayor. There's been a lot of talk about how expensive this campaign has been. I I decided I could either run for mayor or buy some master's tickets, and I thought running for mayor was cheaper, so I ran for mayor. <laughs> uh, you got that right, especially last year. I tell you what, even for the par three, it's amazing. I mean, par three ticket on for two hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars. I mean, you used to be able to pick these up on the street at the face value of twenty-one bucks or whatever. Uh, anyway, Kirk, I imagine there was a lot of excitement uh, last night. You had your party uh, taking a page from Sports Talk one hundred four nine. Uh, you had your celebration at the, on the. Uh, second floor down in Crabtown last night, huh? Oh, we had a great time. We must have had 500 people there. It was hot in that room, but... Uh, now, we Kirk, were... Traver draws a bigger crowd than 500 people. What's the deal? <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know it's, it's a matter of priorities. Which is more important, the city government or sports talk? Hey, Kirk, you know, I was just thinking last night, we have not had you on the air uh, since one of our post-game shows after an OU football game, I think, was your last appearance on Sports Talk 104.9. That was my preemptive strike. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to know, now, now, since you're the, I guess you're not the mayor yet, you, when do you take office? A week from now? Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. I, I'm the mayor-elect. Mayor-elect. That's it, yeah. So we don't have to call you Mayor Humphreys yet. We can call you mayor-elect. Okay, it's since the, you're the mayor-elect. I think it's the most honorable mayor-elect or something like that. <laughs> uh, now, are you going to keep your OU football tickets now? Well, uh, my OU football tickets went the way of all losing seasons. I've had season tickets for 25 years, but, you know, it gets frustrating when you walk down there and you've got tickets that you donated $250 to be able to buy a seat for whatever they charge. And then my son said, well, Dad, can I sell that extra ticket and then keep the money? I said, well, sure. And so he tried to sell it for $5, and the fellow wouldn't buy it. He wanted it for free. I figured I was on the wrong end of that transaction. So uh, I am no longer a season ticket holder for football. Hey, Kirk, uh, much of the campaign centered around maps, and uh, uh, maps has been a big topic even on sports talk over the last year or two uh, with uh, the talk about the ballpark and a lot of criticism and so forth, and now we have the finished product. And I tell you what, uh, with all of the facilities, as, as I see them come to fruition, and, and so it's a great day in Oklahoma City. Hey, hey, tell us real quick, and I don't, I don't want to get back into the campaign. I know you're, you're tired of, uh, of giving the speeches and having the debates over maps and so forth, but just tell us real quick why we need the arena. Well, we need the arena for several reasons. One is the people voted for it, and so our job as, as city leaders is to, to deliver on that promise. Secondly, we will never grow our convention business as long as we only have the myriad. The Marriott is kind of a compromise between a convention center and a sports arena. For instance, 11 weekends this year, we couldn't book a convention into downtown because the Blazers were there on Friday or Saturday night. So the arena will free up the Marriott to be a convention center. And I'll tell you, it's a big step forward. Businesses all over the country are watching Oklahoma City to see if we can deliver on MAPS, which is the most aggressive capital improvements project any city's ever undertaken all at one time. And the arena is a key part of that. We need to deliver on that promise as basically our, our um, down payment on the future and showing we can deliver on what we promised set out to do. All right, Kirk. Now, I'm going to turn you over to Dan Lutz. I mean, Dan is the bulldog. I mean, he's the one that always asks the tough questions. And so he, he, he told me to go on first just to soften you up a little bit. Now, I'm going to turn Dan loose on you. Now, Craig, you're okay. putting me on the spot because I have no tough questions. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I'm not going to do that to the guy the first day on his job. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> This is my kind of radio show, I can tell you that. <laughs> this is the this is the probably the first time you've been up at seven o'clock in a while, huh? You're gonna have to start getting up at this time every day. Oh, I, I was up at six o'clock. I've I've already been on three TV shows this morning. Is that right? That's right. Oh, I thought we had you first. Well, hey, Kirk, I really appreciate you coming on with us. Uh, you bet. And I, hey, I'm have Kirk. a great time down there. And I saw Bev and Sam last night, and they're doing well. Well. 
th- thank you very much. And, and I, I really hated to miss last night. I really did. Uh, um, but, you know, when given the choice... <laughs> well, you know, the important thing is you send in your campaign contributions, so that's what really counts. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> anyway, hey, Kirk, congratulations again. It, what, what was it? Was it like 67%? No, 68-32. 68, okay. we got to get that right. It was a good run. Hey, you guys have a great day. Thanks, Mayor. Hey, hey, I appreciate you coming on with us. Okay, see you. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, my brother, the mayor. Uh, <laughs> my favorite part is you have the mayor elect on talking uh, about how he sold his OU football tickets because of John well, Blake, and, and somehow he got those season tickets back, and later was on the board of regents uh, at OU. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that was interesting Classic. hearing. You know, Kirk ran seriously on, on the his, his campaign was we need to finish maps and build the arena. That's before we ever had the Hornets or anything else, and. And Sounds now, especially familiar. with the latest, yeah, especially with the latest election, uh, very interesting about 25 years later. Okay, uh, we will take a time out. When we come back, more, more from Barry Switzer, this time joined by Al Eshbeck. Coming up next on Huntman's Highlights. Check out Q-Tip, Preston Poole, and Kylie Osborne for the Three is Company WWLS podcast on the SportsAnimal.com and the Sports Animal app. New episodes drop every Friday. Three is Company podcast on demand now wherever you get your podcast. <laughs> We are in the Mixner Showroom. With hundreds of Christmas gifts sparkling in our showcase. Look at that stud. Ooh, where? What? She must be looking at our case of diamond stud earrings. Oh. Starting under $400. We've got brilliant freeborn diamond studs. And ravishing forever after earrings. Our diamond bracelets are popular this year, too. They're gorgeous. Nothing says I love you like diamonds. And Mitchner Farron has them all. And Mark? Yeah? You're the only stud I need. Merry Christmas, babe. At $10,000 off MSRP or just $7.99 a month, now is your chance to get the truck that does more from the dealer that does more, Bob Moore Ford. Choose from 130 new Ford trucks in stock, like a new 2023 Ford F-150 for $10,000 off MSRP or just $7.99 a month. So head over to Bob Moore Ford, I-35 and Southeast 89th Street or BobMooreFord.com. Stock 1848, 6000 down 7.9% for 84 months WAC. We want to see you at Kalitty Kia. Interest rates are climbing. It's getting harder than ever to get approved. Never fear. Kalitty Kia is here. Rush to Kalitty Kia, where we have lenders ready to approve the first 100 people for a brand new Kia. That's right, Sibi. All you need is $1,000 down, six months on the job, and a valid Oklahoma driver's license. Corey, that's an amazing superpower. It's another reason we're the number one Kia dealership in Oklahoma. Corey, nobody beats Kalitty Kia. Sibi, nobody. Rule out to real portaxel with verified income of 5,000 monthly payment. Please see dealer for more details. At Lucky Star Casino, we're making your holidays shine. Slay the season in style with the chance to win a 2024 Buick Encore at all six locations. Join us and unwrap the magic of December only at Lucky Star Casino. And don't miss out on your chance to earn five times entries on Fridays. Head to any of our six Oklahoma locations. Lucky Star Casino, the biggest jackpots are closer than you think. Brody and Jeremy here with Randy Bowen Chevrolet in Chandler, Oklahoma. We've been making great deals for our customers for over 24 years. But i only been doing it for five, right, Dad? That's right, Brody. So whether you've trusted us for 24 years or five, we welcome you back to Chandler. Have you never been? Well, we invite you to come see the easy way to buy a Chevrolet with Randy Bowen Chevrolet. Located in Chandler, Oklahoma. Exit 166. Randy Bowen Chevrolet, we do it different. Different by design. Randy Bowen Chevrolet, you're going to love it. Open enrollment for health care coverage has been extended. If you missed the initial 12-15 deadline, you can still purchase 2023 coverage up until January 15th. Call Allison Insurance with over 70 years in the industry. Allison Insurance can help spot problems and avoid common mistakes when purchasing dental, vision, short-term health coverage, annuities, and more. Visit allisoninsurance.com. Then call Robert at 800-580-5587 or 745-2968. Allison Insurance. They are the experts. Don't let old man winter be a guest in your house. Call Barnett Electrical Heating and Air. Their team of experts is here to make sure your winter is worry-free. Call Barnett Electrical Heating and Air today.
program is a Podcast One.com production. From Hollywood, California, by way of the Broken Skull Ranch, this is the Steve Austin Show. Give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. Now, here's Steve Austin. The one and only former governor of Minnesota, Jesse the Body Ventura. And that shepherd's bigger, but the Malinois faster and actually has a stronger bite. Are they still prone to the hip dysplasia? No. But, okay. Not at all, because they're only 75 pounds. Gotcha. Those are usually the dogs that are 90 to 100 will get the hip trouble. Although my dog is got some arthritis. You know. We are in the Mixer Showroom. With hundreds of Christmas gifts sparkling in our showcase. Look at that stud. Ooh, where? What? She must be looking at our case of diamond stud earrings. Oh. Starting under $400. We've got brilliant freeborn diamond studs. And ravishing forever after earrings. Our diamond bracelets are popular this year, too. They're gorgeous. Nothing says I love you like diamonds. And Mitchner Farron has them all. And Mark... Yeah? You're the only stud I need. Merry Christmas, babe. We want to see you at Kalini Kia. Interest rates are climbing. It's getting harder than ever to get approved. Never fear. Kalini Kia is here. Rush to Kalini Kia, where we have lenders ready to approve the first 100 people for a brand new Kia. That's right, Sibi. All you need is $1,000 down, six months on the job, and a valid Oklahoma driver's license. Corey, that's an amazing superpower. It's another reason we're the number one Kia dealership in Oklahoma. Corey, nobody beats Kalini Kia. Sibi, nobody. Approval out for real or take sold with verified income of 5 times monthly payment. Please see dealer for more details. The Thunder are at home looking to beat the Clippers tomorrow night at 7 on ESPN 640 and 98.1 FM, WWLS, The Sports Animal. Broadcasting sponsored by Parrish Devon, official personal injury lawyers of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Visit PepperWins.com, WWLS FM, The Village, Oklahoma City, The Sports Animal, a cumulus station. Welcome back. Huntman's Highlights on the Animal Craig Humphreys along with Sam Humphreys. And we heard from Barry Switzer earlier talking about Nebraska. Now let's hear him talk about Texas. Uh, this was our final show of the 2005 season, the, the year that Texas won the national title, beating USC uh, in the Rose Bowl game. I think it was Rose Bowl. Uh, Texas beat USC. So this is the 9th of January, 2006. All right. Uh, second season of, of doing Barry show. We had Al Eshback join us uh, for the last show of the year. That night we would also have Billy Tubbs show. Uh, Billy Tubbs on uh, with us because uh, Billy would do a show starting after Switzer's uh, show was over. But anyway, uh, we had Barry and Al, and they got into a debate about whether or not to cheer for the Texas Longhorns. But let's start with the Texas game since it's fresh on everyone's minds. Texas uh, wins the national title, 41-38 over USC. First of all, who were you pulling for in this game? I, I told it to everyone in my household, I want Mac uh, to do well. I, I'm, I'm for Mac. You know, fans fans can be biased and, and carry it, uh, carry it uh, a lot further than coaches and players. You know, personal, the personal part of the game. Uh, it's not going to affect the crew. Crew, Texas is going to get how do, you, how do you say that? That's, it never has. Texas is going to get Well, you never won. played them when they won a national yeah. championship. I, I, yeah. I did. Yeah, because you I kicked their butt them. every year. No. I'll tell you something. Hey. I, I kicked their butt, you, but they, that was the only game they lost. You think now. you're getting Billy Tuck? <laughs> <Billy Tuck. laughs> they beat us in 69. They beat us in 70. beat me in 63. Well, they Texas, win Texas win is always going to get players. They they didn't, the University yeah. of Texas is always going to get They're going to get Billy players. Sims, too, if they win a national championship in 74. No, they won't. Yeah, they are. No, they yeah, they are. No, they won't. They're going to Baylor. <laughs> Billy Sims is going to Baylor. Hey, Adrian Peterson already says that, hey, I'm going to Oklahoma because they're playing for the championship in Texas, is it? No, that's uh, the, the kid. The Oklahoma did a better job of recruiting. That's why. It helps, Barry. You know hey, that. Well, look, Al, I promise you, it, it, the, the University of Texas is going to get players regardless. Of, you bet Oklahoma's going to have to have quarterbacks. Texas got quarterbacks. The only time Texas had ever had problems, they didn't play well quarterback. Tommy, Tommy Harris wasn't even considering Oklahoma until they beat Texas. Wasn't well, even considering. They're all. They're always going to get their uh, pretty good 20 football players out of Texas. Oh, I agree with that now. I agree with that. Now, are you surprised that it was 35 years since their last title in 1970? 
what was it, 1970? Yeah, was, 69 and uh, 70, 60, they went. 69, 70, back. I mean, they won one of the titles in 70, but... Yeah, it's been a long time, but I'm going to tell you something. They lost to, to us in, six, uh, what is it, 74? They lost to us in 72 by one game. They, they go 11 and 1. One. They might have been national champions had they not lost Oklahoma those years. Darrell came close uh, to winning a couple more national championships. Well, I, th I, think, chance to. I think the great stat... They, they lost to Akers, fumbles to Georgia in the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. They're number one with Earl Campbell. They're going to win at that. They've had their opportunities to win national uh, championships since then. I think the most incredible stat until like, what, three or four years ago, since 84, they never finished in the top ten at the end of the season. That's... Yeah, that's uh, that's a staggering. Uh, you know that that shouldn't happen. Right. Then it probably not will happen any longer. But as uh, long as they get quarterbacks, as long as they were. Now you said it's the best job in the country. I, well, yeah, I said that 30 years ago. And I still believe it is. I, the UC, the USC's, the the Texas, the, the proximity to the recruitment talent is the key, and. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it, guys that have to go along. You, you set this University of Oklahoma up there uh, at Miami, Oklahoma. I've said this before. Our tradition wouldn't be as good as it is at Norman, Oklahoma, and it'd be a hell of a lot better if we were sitting down at Marietta. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's it, it, that's what it's all about, guys. You can take anyone's roster, and I promise you, will you take Penn State? Go anywhere in the country, and you take a major school, and you draw a a radius of 250 miles, 500 miles around that campus. 90% of those kids will be from there because families want to be a part of college experience. All right, experience. I got to ask you about the winning streak. USC had won 34 in a row. You were undefeated your first 30 games at Oklahoma. You won 28 straight after that tie uh, with USC back in 73. So you're undefeated your first 30 games. Uh, in fact, you only lost one time in your first 40 games at Oklahoma. Talk about the winning streak, and what I want to know is... Uh, is it is it it seems like a lot of teams not a lot of teams but it seems like there have been teams to get up in the 30 range you know between 28 and 34 in that range but you know how much tougher is it to sustain it that third and fourth year and so forth as far as a winning streak like USC had well it built i remember it building on us in 75 you know uh, uh I remember the field goal going wide, too. Rick Fulcher's field goal attempt from about the 11-yard line against SC out there. And, uh, you know, I thought we were going to have a chip shot to win the ball game in the fourth quarter and beat them 10-7 to and keep that consecutive mm -hmm. winning streak alive. But I thought we would go, 38? I remember... Yeah, yeah you won... Well, you won... Uh, uh, I won 28, 28 Yeah, 28, 28 straight. straight. I inherited a 10. Uh, ten wins, though, from Shuck, didn't I? Oh, that's right. It was that's 37. Right. It was 37, I yeah. think. Coach, See, you're right. On the 38th. Right. So it's the Colorado that's exactly right. in, in 72. Yeah, that's exactly that's right. right. I want to see what from 72, yeah. 1972 to 75 without losing the ball game. That's what it was. And we had two undefeated seasons in there. But, but I... Uh, you know, it built, and the pressure was there. There's no question about it. And I knew that we would probably, to lose the ball game, we are going to have to we'd beat ourselves or help beat ourselves, and which was obviously that's what happened when we did lose. But it did take some pressure off. But you know what? We go up to Missouri the next week, and if we jump on Missouri. We got Missouri 20 to nothing at half. We're playing good. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, we start the same thing we did against. We turned to start turning the ball over. Missouri's a good, pretty good football team. Zarka with the score. They were good. They were a very good uh, football team. And we struggled to win the ball game in the end. And uh, uh, But... Uh, then, of course, next week we come back and play like national champions when we drill Nebraska here, 35 to 10. All right. It seems to me, Coach, that the difference in the USC team this year was that their defense wasn't as good. They did the two defensive tackles, uh, Patterson and Cody, and, and Tatupu, the linebacker, is AFC, is uh, like for, uh, rookie of the year. So what I'm saying is it seems to me it's hard to sustain it defensively like over a three or four year period, you're going to have a mediocre defense some year, right? It's going to turn on players turn over, and, that, and that's why we weren't. Someone called me the other day. I, the reason I was grinning and laughing now when you were talking about they're not as good on defense. No one's good on defense against Vince Young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no defense is good on defense against that. But don't guy. you think last but year's but USC defense would have more success? Probably, but, but we turned over. You know, people the press were calling me about this buildup, and they said, well. We, you were, had an opportunity to be a three-peat. I said, not in my heart, not in my talent uh, uh, evaluation of our football team. I never considered a three-repeat because we were a sophomore football team. We were
were a senior team in 75. We graduated our football team. We had sophomore starting at the, 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 the quarterback, sophomore tailback, sophomore full. All those guys, Greg Roberts. Saw. We were a very offensive line, young line, but we were still a good football team. Probably should have won 10, 11 ball games that year. Well, it was the- what a run from Barry Switzer at the start, Sam. He inherited seven wins from Chuck in, in 1972. He went unbeaten his first 30 games at Oklahoma before losing at home to Kansas. But won his first game, had the the 7-7 tie with uh, USC uh, out in the Coliseum in Los Angeles. And then, like we said, 28 wins in a row after that, but unbeaten in his first 30 games. And OU had a 37-game unbeaten streak before the loss to Kansas, the I, great Barry Switzer. I could yeah. listen to Coach Switzer, you oh, know, you all day. You had to be pinching yourself that you were doing the Legends show. Oh, I was. I, I mean, I, I was because obviously I grew up an Oklahoma fan, and and to get to do a Switzer show for three years, uh, it it was fantastic. Back between two thousand four, two thousand six. Okay, it was also fantastic to get to interview one of my childhood heroes, and that's the great Arnold Palmer at his last Masters in 2004. Arnold Palmer coming down in three, two, one. Joined now by the King, Arnie. And Arnie, talk about your love affair with the patrons here at Augusta National. Well, it's been wonderful. As I said, uh, I feel like uh, if I can get through tomorrow, everything will be pretty complete. Uh, That's something I've always wanted to do. And uh, now it's one day away. And I'll look forward to it. Also, talk about your love affair with the game of golf. Well, as a part of the reason that I'm here and why I'm playing as long as I've played, I, I enjoy playing and I enjoy the game. And uh, even though I'm not scoring the way I'd like to, there were a lot of good moments out there when I hit the ball pretty good a couple times. And uh, like I said the other day, you know, I'm a dreamer. Tomorrow I may come out and shoot 65. Who knows? What will you miss most about Augusta National as a player? Well, just playing here and being here as a competitor is, has been a very important part of my life. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll miss it. But I understand my poor scoring. The time has come when uh, it's time to kind of sit back and watch and enjoy it. Ernie, we appreciate your time. Have a great day tomorrow. Thank you. The great Arnold Palmer, 2004, at his final Masters. And then uh, the next year, Sam, I was lucky enough to interview the great Jack Nicklaus, uh, the winner of six green jackets uh, in Jack's final Masters. Uh, And we'll get that queued up here and hear from Jack Nicklaus uh, the next year in 2005. Okay, let me, excuse me here. Hang on just a second. All right, here we go. Jack Nicholas, 2005 Masters. Jack, talk about the reception from the patrons here today at Augusta National. Well, I had a nice reception all day long. I think that I don't know how many of them knew that it was the last time I'm going to play, but uh, there was a, certainly a lot of them did, and uh, uh, they were they were very nice, and uh, I got a little teary-eyed in the last hole, and uh, uh, after I hit a couple of nice shots, and I... So I could, I could, not enough to be able to even get, to get my darn, darn little blast putt in the green, though, or in the hole. Talk about the birdies at number 15 and 
beat Ernie at the Olympic Club, came from behind at a U.S. Open. But I interviewed a man who had shot 106, <laughs> Billy Casper. And during this interview, I asked him where the where the scorecard is, and he points at his back pocket, and he says, it's right there. He's not signing that pocket. one. Yeah. He, he, was, he was not. He couldn't have been nicer. Uh, here is the great Billy Casper. Casper coming down in three, two, one. Well, Billy, a long day today that uh, just never got a whole lot better, huh? Well, you know, I was ready to play at uh, twelve thirty, and then we didn't tee off, and we were going to tee off at one, and then uh, I wasn't ready to tee off at one, and obviously I wasn't ready to tee off at one thirty. My first hit was the duck hook over in the rough, and uh, it never got much better from that. T- talk about what happened at number sixteen. Oh, I just hit a few balls in the, the work of the the water. Uh, there was some turtles down there nesting, and uh, they took my golf balls right on and put them right in the nest with the, the rest of the things. I, there's five of them in their nest down there. Now, who was keeping your score today? Tommy Aaron. And so, I mean, after, did he ask you what what you had on that hole? Or no, how, I how, asked him what I, <laughs> I couldn't keep track. <laughs> I asked both he and Charlie Cootie, and they both.